When it comes to cars, home improvement, or sex, he's a do-it-yourselfer. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. The choice we're going to mandate. She get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. We love that about you. Right, Gina Grant? That's right. And Bald Brian. Oh, oh, no. What happened, Gina? Yo. <laughs> I've never experienced this before. I spend mo- the majority of my life trying to avoid things that would give me food poisoning. Mm-hmm. And people are like, I don't know. There's a stomach bug going around. And I don't, frankly, I don't know the difference. Mm-hmm. But I just wasn't feeling very good. And Brian, remember on Tuesday or whenever it was, maybe Monday or Tuesday, when I told you, like, look at my eye. Doesn't it look kind of fucked up? Like it was oh, kind yeah. of swollen. You had a bit of a swollen thing. It was on. weird. That had been going on. And then I looked it up later and I said, Food poisoning, eye swelling, and apparently that can be a precursor. Mm-hmm. But um, I was just not not feeling the best. I remember I was in here on Tuesday, and I'm here, but I didn't feel like I was kind of feeling a little sweaty and a little like glazed over, and really like having to like double down to really like pay attention and be like in the moment. Mm-hmm. Just like, it just doesn't feel right. And I got home, and I took my own to the airport, and I got home, and I was just like, nah. Yeah, I'm going to go lay down. Something's wrong. Maybe taking your mom to the airport is what really brought it on. That's oh. possible. That's what, hour and 10 minutes in the car? Burbank. Oh, oh So okay. that was an easy right. drop off. Mm-hmm. Thank Christ. Mm-hmm. I get home and I lay down. I was like, ah, like you start really salivating. Mm-hmm. And yo, that was. Grease the wheels. So I th- I started dry heaving. I was like, oh, I've done this before. I'm not not a fan. Um, but I don't remember. You're in college. <laughs> Stop me if, if, if this is too much because I'm not into it. But I don't remember the last time, maybe childhood, that like anything came out. Like I'm really? not really a thrower upper now. You haven't yacked. No. Because I don't a... really drink or anything. And I've never been well, pregnant. Yeah, but most people get the flu at some point. I mean. And... No. No. That's a life well led. Thank you. I'm curious because. Um, I remember one time I said in front of Dr. Drew many years ago, I was like, well, everyone drank too much and barfed, you know? And he's like, you make yourself barf, you know, the bed spinning around, you put your finger and he's like, "Mm, no. And I'm like, what do you mean? No. It was kind of like when I said, everyone over six foot one pees in the sink. Right. And everyone just looked at me and went, uh, no, no, no. And that's the thing. Like, obviously, clearly I'm not a bulimic. That is not something that would ever interest me. Mm -hmm. Um, but full on, geyser man and i looked up because i didn't know if it was just like a colloquialism to say projectile vomiting Mm -hmm. that's a symptom when it overshoots shit Mm. i didn't know that um so hi adam ray and someone say projectile vomiting (laughs) that's my cue i can give you a couple pieces of it okay so i threw up basically every half hour for nine hours oh wow until around two eight because and i was kind of trying to live tweet it but i was like you know what this is not a great idea so, Were you watching Brad Williams stand up or what? Was really yeah, helpful. it didn't. It did, you, so, it did not help. So it did not help. I uh, just because I it, I was kind of fascinated with what was happening to me. Um, around two in the morning, I got a tell. Thank God, I got a teledoc call for a medicine that changed my life. It's called Zofran. I, mm. you, I could have given you any number of Zofran. I thought about that. It was <laughs> it was initially as Brian, I'm sure could tell you, it was it was given to chemo patients. Stops the nausea. Wow. Yes, it works mm-hmm. really. And well. now it's like for all of the rest of us. It's you know people say take it on you know trips overseas or on cruises, whatever. Changed my life. Finally, around two in the morning. Zofran and chemo sound like a morning show. <laughs> it's Zoe, yeah, and her best friend Fran, <laughs> sure, and then their islander friend chemo yeah who's always pop pop they're like let's go to chemo with the weather it's going to be hot again today oh chemo you have such huge calves oh well i work out i do pilates and also crossfit and fitbit but that's your samoan heritage come on hey come on i'm native american you always say i'm samoan (laughs) same difference sure whatever you had land whitey booted you out get your bikini and your sunglasses ready it's going to be 69 degrees again thank god So that's a game changer. Get it if you can. Get it early and often. And Crumble my house. God bless you. <laughs> so no more Tums. It's Zofran's oh, the way. Tums is oh, like Tums, no. Tums is very eighty eight, isn't it? Yeah. Ugh. Have you, uh, Adam? Have you booted many times? Have you yacked many times? Oh yeah. Have you barfed I mean, many times. <clears throat> unfortunately, yeah. I mean, just from a. A poor mixture and timing of pot and booze. Oh, oh pot and booze. Yeah. And pot and booze were the, uh, they're the, they were kicked out of the time slot for Zofran and Chemo. Oh, they, we bumped them to drive time. Yeah. <laughs>
Potts. Hi, I'm Jim Pot. Hi, I'm Randy Booz. And if you like to fuck and you like trucks and you like to shoot ducks, then this is the time slot for you. We talk about sports, pussy, and top golf. <laughs> And not in that order. That's right. uh, My muscles hurt so bad. So, so the, yeah. sorry, the only other thing I really need people to know, because this is a public service announcement, Zofran, and also, God bless Andy, he would get me the Pedialyte and stuff at all hours of the night. I asked for orange, he got me strawberry lemonade, oh. Pedialyte. Yikes. Mm. Rough going down. A real physical assault coming up. That's like the mm. orange starburst. Mm. Well, I kind of like the orange starburst. I'll take that back. Okay, okay. okay. It's that, like the pink starburst. I, the yellow starburst. Like stuff coming oh, up. Oh, I kind of like the yellow <laughs> oh, one. No. Oh, man. It's, I'll see myself out. It's just, it's not a good flavor, but it's a real physical, it's a real assault on mm. the way back out. So stay away from strawberry lemonade flavor and please get yourself some Zofran. You know, in terms oh, of so a nation, you, Thank you know, you. I, I always talk about sort of the, um, Markers, you know, when you start mm. putting barbed wire around the freeway right. signs in LA, it was time to really take a look at ourselves as a city. When San Francisco started handing out poop maps, mm -hmm. like here's where the human yeah. feces are, so go ahead and take an alternative yeah. route. And I would say about mid pandemic, early mid pandemic, when Pedialyte started doing the commercials right. where it's not just for the kids anymore. Oh, no. right. Hey, dad, you have a problem too? <laughs> That's right. Show yeah. the dad by the fridge at 4 a.m. Yep. chugging it down because <laughs> yes. he's doing a day drinking on a Zoom call. <laughs> that's another marker. Oh, like absolutely. the shit that's yeah. made for infants with diarrhea. Yes. We're now marketing it to dudes. And I would say also the marketing of that drug, I haven't seen the commercial in a while, where the guys who did so many painkillers were constipated. Yeah. And now we've come up with a... The, the, yeah. Yeah. Hey, doing those pain pain killers. Here's yeah, the way same to... group that's selling the painkillers is now oh. selling... Based on my history as though, friend Jenny, you might need some uh, some some uh, laxatives. I, to I was up. told about that. Is that going to be an issue? You mi mild laxatives will take care of it. Thank it's not, you. It's not an opioid. Well, now, this was an unfortunate precursor for my husband and stepson for two weeks from now mm -hmm. because I am a bad patient. Mm -hmm. I'm a baby and a half. Every, I'm I'm like half asleep, just going. Eh, fuck. Yeah, that's what you're supposed to be fuck. like. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah, you're fine. Oh, good. Yeah. Because I'm literally like, like my head is over the toilet going, <sighs> oh, God. Oh, fuck. Oh, God. Oh, fuck. Like all night because I'm just. They're just dealing with that, not being like, suck it up. No, you fucking no. Pussy. That's yeah. not bad for them. A little no. stoicism is always yeah. nice, though. That's not my area. <laughs> Wait, now, do you think it's going to go backwards the same way you say that Pedialyte went from kids to adults? You think, like, Nugenics, they're going to oh. find ways to cater to, like, 10- and 11-year-old boys? Right. Yeah. Like you the know? silver centrum? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, look, the second, the other jump the shark moment was when we started making the chewable vitamins for adults. Yeah. yeah. The gummies. The fiber gummies. The gummies. And... Man, I sucked right into that boat. <laughs> yeah. I mean, pretty soon... I, I imagine my children as adults taking their gummy multiple vitamin mm -hmm. and dipping it in ranch. Sure. <laughs> I think it's, it's going to come with a little packet of ranch. Yes. It should. There's nothing that doesn't come with ranch yeah. these days. Or be you like know? a gusher, you know, filled with more vitamins yeah. inside. Yeah. Like filled, with gummy gel filled with gummy ranch. Gummy ranch. Like a pocket Gusher for ranch inside. Why does that Listen. feel like what Zofran and Chemo's sp <laughs> main sponsor is? And today's show is sponsored by Gummy Ranch. That's right. <laughs> when yeah, the my, liquid isn't enough. My kids are going to be renewing their driver's license, and the guy at the DMV is going to be like, you want some ranch? Yeah. <laughs> He's going to go, I'm just going to take the picture. Well, a little ranch while you're filling out the paperwork. So Where do you hurt. rank ranch as far as, uh, like, condiments that are um, just used or beloved the most? Like, Because mm -hmm. it truly... I know people that put it on everything, and I mean pizza. everything from eggs to pizza oh, to egg. taint. It's there is no surface where ranch isn't acceptable in their lives. I saw a Pizza Hut commercial where they were we getting taking cable. their cheese infused crust mm -hmm. oh and God. dipping it in, the in, into the ranch. Well, that's brilliant. Oh, yeah. Mama <laughs> Celeste is rolling over in her grave right now. I guarantee, along with Chef Boyardee and all the other icons of the Italian yeah. Thank you for throwing market. Boyardee into right. that. Do you know what I, I was just real quick Boyardee tangent, and that's the third time I've said that today. I, in college, we had to do in our um, movement class, right, at, at, at SC in the acting school, we had to do a, 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 we, a create some movement thing that was all like movement. There could be, uh, you couldn't talk, but you could have audio. So I wrote like a one act 
play that was like a scene, a scene from like a movie about Chef Boyardee's, Chef Boyardee's life, like a biopic. Mm -hmm. So it was me moving around a bedroom. I had rain sound effects that I edited in, and then it was me doing his inner monologue. So it started off with me looking out the window, and there was like rain and like soft, like John Williams, like strings. And I was like, every day I look out the window, <laughs> dreaming of the next big thing. Pasta, ravioli. Beforeoni, which one will be the next hit maker that'll take things up a notch? My family is poor. I'm a drunk. I'm addicted to sex and booze. Like it was just this like, cause there's no real story around Boyardee. I did all this like wow. research. I Googled two things. And there was like a couple uh, facts about that he was a real guy. Uh, it's not a Bartles and James type of situation. <laughs> no, this where is not a fictional somebody man. Somebody just cooked this up. Right. No, he was a real Italian chef. And then like, there was maybe like four lines about you know, created this thing in Italy, created this, whatever, and was like, and then it just kind of ends. Mm. So I'm like, oh, there is an open door for someone to tell this story. And I want to be, where's my Hollywood cam? I want to be the guy to tell the story. Yeah. Fucking Hanks, call me up. Yeah, no, it's, it needs There's to be. one man out there, one man who loves pasta more than me, and his name is Boyardi. Some people mispronounce it. They go, Boyardi. And he's always quick to go, it's Boyardi. <laughs> With a capital D at the end and two E's, like my family meant it to be. This guy took pasta and the Italian cuisine up a notch. People still eat that shit out of a can. I get real fucked up and eat it because it's delicious. It makes me feel good. It takes me back to those days when my mom was 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 working four jobs and bought me a clarinet because she was sad. There's so many things that that ravioli and beefaroni cure, like sadness and and meat sweats. And look, is it real? Is it real food inside that can? <laughs> We don't know, yeah. but it's tasty. Yeah, he was like, Inspiring. people want to eat pasta in yes. a park standing up. Yes. And I'm going to make you. that possible. Fucking with there's a the tag spork. Man. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I don't put know. put his face Chris, on the can? You got to look into uh, Chef. You know, Chef Boyardee always looked to me like a slightly thinner version of Sergeant Schultz from... Uh, Hogan's from Hogan's Heroes, nailed yeah, it. The same, the same kind of stash. Yep. Did you uh, grow up on that stuff? Oh man, I mean, again, there was like a handful of staple canned foods that poor kids ate, and yeah. I mean, like mm. Campbell soup because it was like fifty cents for like a forty pack, right? You know, and then uh, and also, you know, Reggie White ate it, so we were like, right. it's probably pretty good. Yeah, and turned uh, out great for him. Turned out great for him. <laughs> and uh, Boyardee was just again a, a cheap, delicious like, and it was canned food is shit that kids can like at seven and eight. Yeah, like, you yeah. can't open a fucking can and put it in a bowl and put it in the microwave. Yeah, now, some kids can't. You know, mm -hmm. kids without you know hands. Mm -hmm. And um, but uh, but it was a tasty, quick fix uh, that. Uh, that when the folks aren't around to, to cook for you, you can uh, can swap down. Yeah. The earliest form of cooking begins when you start combining different shit <clears throat> food that is cooked in a microwave. Mm. Like when you go, what if I took some Kraft macaroni and cheese yeah. and then I put some SpaghettiOs over the top of SpaghettiOs. it? SpaghettiOs. Did wow. you like that? See, it was, it, yes. was, it was too sweet for me. It didn't feel pasta. Enough. Yeah, there, I like mean, too much corn syrup and so much sugar in that pasta sauce, probably. But yes. you know, I amazing. would reckon that a can of Spaghettios is about the worst you could do from a nutritional <laughs> standpoint. <laughs> it's all carbs it's all and, corn and, syrup. and carbs and corn syrup. Oh yeah, I mean, each can is like I don't know, ninety-eight grams of fat. But then you know, that's what? it. That's it. <laughs> It's just it's just bad news bears all the way around. I think but, you're right. Like Chef Boyardee, I remember reading about this a while ago. He was a real chef named Boyardee. Yes, and like he was an Italian chef, and they bastardized his image and his name. And but like we don't know a billion dollars when it took a billion. I mean, that is mm -hmm. a. I mean, we have to probably really do some uh, number crunching to figure out where in the uh, levels of, of billion dollar canned food businesses he ranks. But uh. like, it's still out there, it's still selling. You still see it on the main shelves. It's not pushed back oh, next no. to Well, here's the question is, Juan Valdez, was he actually a humble coffee farmer mm. from the hills of Nicaragua or wherever the hell, right. Colombia, Columbia. Where, wherever he was, was he a guy? I would like, that you know, thing you know, was a mascot. A, you know, it'd be a good game. Who's the mascot and who, who, who existed? Aunt Jemima, Mrs. Butterworth. Yeah, that's right. Because I thought Boyardee was a fake guy. Mm. Yes. And then, Boyardee. Yeah, because again, you've never seen, and like, it's not that I equate like, was he real or not real by if there's a biopic mm. on him, but like, there hasn't even been like a 60 Minutes on him. You know mm. what I'm saying? Yeah, he hasn't even profile. been like guest starred on Fresh Print. Like, there's right. been no. Yeah. He hasn't been out and about. People believe more in Bigfoot than they do in Chef Boyardee, and yes. that's 
That's that's the problem with the country. I, I'm glad you guys brought up SpaghettiOs because I'm looking at the nutritional value and it is rough stuff. Oh, but God. right underneath it, it says, uh-oh, healthy SpaghettiOs. The fun, delicious O's you love are healthy and not afraid to show it. Um, just so you know, one, there's two servings per can. There are, uh, That's always a lie. Who less than a can? I know. They do know. that all the time. Like, this yogurt cup serves seven. <laughs> yeah. like, no, it doesn't. By the way, never a good sign when it says, uh-oh, before the name of your <laughs> brand. <laughs> yeah, uh, total carbs per half a can. So for a whole can, 60 carbs, oh, um, sodium, uh, 1,300 milligrams. Oof. Trans fats, sat. Whoa, 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 whoa! Easy yeah. with that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Sugar is sixteen grams. Um, it's it, it's packing a punch. Oh, okay. Yeah, Divine should have went with trans fats. <laughs> I mean, in terms of a name, like if Divine was a pool hustler, yeah. versus a drag queen, yeah. yeah. Trans fats would have been the best oh, jazz singer. Yeah. Yes. name Absolutely. for Divine yes. ever. Yeah. Well, so you were a fat kid, Adam, yeah. and not anymore. I mean, I'm doing okay, yeah. You were quick fat. Down. I was quick fat, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. I truly, you know, I truly, here's how fat I was. When I would, my buddy and I used to prank call sex hotlines when we were like 10. We'd steal his mom's credit card. We'd see these commercials that were like, are you bored? And we were like, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> you want to have a good time? Always. <laughs> Do you know somebody with a trampoline? Have, I got something better than a trampoline. You want to make me come? And we were like, come over and help us find a trampoline? <laughs> so we called these uh, hotlines. I remember I, one time she gets on right away and she was like, mm, what's up, big boy? And I was like, fuck, she can hear how fat I am. <laughs> but uh, but I just loved snack, like this type of shit. But I was so active that I did. I thought it would just like sweat out of me. Like the, the SpaghettiOs would just sweat out of my pores. But mm-hmm. no, that stuff sticks. I'm sorry to bring up old wounds, but what was the name that that bully gave you? Oh, Penis and Tits Kid. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I don't make sh- merch shirts with that and sell them on the road. Maybe because I get in trouble, but I don't know. Like that's a pretty my face with penis and t- I mean, oh god, <laughs> We're looking your at graphics that department cute here boy. is one of my. I mean, if this isn't this should be on every promo pick I use. That's NBA <laughs> basketball player Kendall Gill. Uh, find him uh, online. He actually commented on the picture when I posted it and said, wow. Mm. <laughs> Didn't even say like, wow, those are the good old days. Just was probably like, wow, I can't believe you were a lesbian boy and grew into a adult man. See, you that's know, funny. Because, well, he does. I mean, we're I was looking a at a horribly, picture of you and Kendall Gill. Yeah, look it up on my gram or just Google Adam Ray Kendall right. Gill. But it, you look like one of my mom's friends. I, felt, I look like Barb or Penny. Yeah. You look like. I'm wearing a Venice Beach. Like, is that a fucking polo hoodie? You <laughs> look like, like an interact. Fran, and I'm wearing two shirts underneath it. You look like Fran Drescher. Thank you. If she had that kind of <laughs> cancer where she has to take steroids yeah, and you end up getting a big puff puff, up, puffy yeah. Moon Jerry face. Lewis kind of look. But look at those big ass lips, dude. But but let me say <laughs> DSL, yours, <laughs> yours too. Let me say this. Might <laughs> we, <laughs> might Thanks. we be Thanks missing an opportunity for our for the youth? Because there's no more bullying anymore. Right. But when you're a kid, you knew exactly what your shortcomings were by whatever you were called. Oh, yeah. So Long when distance. you were yeah. penis and tits guy, you knew you had to lose a couple. By the way, I love that you're making this point because honestly, it's the bullying that made me finally fucking take a look in the mirror and uh, and put down the Pop-Tart. That's and what, now, that's what I mean, Michael how, Strahan says Here's that. how fucking fat I was. I remember the first time I saw my mom kiss a guy that wasn't my dad. It was the first guy she dated, right? And I've talked about this before where he like, I knew he wasn't the guy because he came out and he was. I was shooting hoops and he was like, you mind if I shoot some basket shots with you? All and right. I was like, fucking, yeah. Just a bad news uh, situation. And uh, this guy... Uh, end up kissing my mom and I remember leaning out the window with a granola a chewy bar in one hand a brown sugar pop tart in the other <laughs> and I just screamed at him all the curse words I knew because I was so angry so it was like pent up but I only knew a handful of curse words because I was in the fucking what fifth grade so I called him like a fart boner titty fuck and then he looked up and then I was like you butt fucker farter which is like you know not, that's not doing a lot of damage but it was um, and the and the food's you know falling out of the uh, out of the window because I couldn't put the snack down and insult the man who was potentially my new father other. Um, yeah. Well, first off, speaking of parents, I, uh, my mom, my nickname for my mom is Chef Boy or Don't. Hilarious. Because she was horrible in the kitchen. No. But um, nickname. So you know who you are by, by what you mm-hmm. get called. And you think about it, at some point you leave the schoolyard and then it goes away. But at some point you become an adult. And you get the really, there's a guy with the really bad comb over who's trying to make that work. 
There, there's a chick version of it. And because we don't do adult nicknames, there's no shaming no, right. anymore. If, if, if that guy with the bad comb over at age 63 was on a schoolyard back in the day, we'd have a very <laughs> embarrassing comb over name yes, for him. Yes. And then he'd have to go kind of readjust. Yes. He'd have to rethink what he was doing. <laughs> I was known as Brillo Head, and uh, you showed them. Yeah, I, I got my I, I got my hair unbrillified oh, yeah. at, at some point. I was uh, a buck tooth. I got you know, and besides just the standard, you know, from the faculty, stupid. You know, just that was just a basic. Kind <laughs> the faculty of, called you stupid. Well, it was just a bad was, student no, kind it was, of. No, it, right. It was it was the donkey understood. squad. Would mm-hmm. you fight back, or would you think of things and say them weeks later? Like, were you? And I don't know if you've touched on this yet, but you strike me as someone that would muddle something under your breath for people to hear to get the laughs, but not fully want the repercussions of calling like, you know, a principal. Uh, I was a, a, a I butt was fucker farter. I the, the people that bullied me were my friends. Oh, who were also the lead bullies mm. of the school. Oh, but didn't really spend time on the riffraff. Mm. You know, were they trying like, to toughen you up for the group. No, it was just it was jump a, in. It was a steel hardening steel type situation it was forged in fire the biggest bullies bullied each other they didn't muss with underclass whoever nerd whatever unless they they were getting free slushies yes that was in junior high but they didn't even know their names but they weren't like ray wasn't going around being like nerd like pushing random kids into lockers no it's the the misnomer the bully is they don't know who the non-knowable kids are the easily bullied kids. I don't even know. As a matter of fact, as I said, uh, Ryan Ray, Hitchman. who was you know the main bully, mm. he was uh, assigned. We had a kid named uh, Dane Boysen. Dane Boysen. <laughs> wow, had, what a bully name! Yeah, a, seriously, had a blood situation. He had he had some sort of congenital heart oh, issue. Boy. His fingertips and nails were always purple. His like oh. lips were purple. Sure. So he was Dane Boysen Barry. <laughs> Of course, well, that's because he was you know, literally low hanging. He was fruit. dying At that point, in, you in, wear in the gloves. fifth grade, right? And Ray was assigned to protect. He was his protection yeah. detail. So who was he assigned by? Teacher. Are you serious? Yeah. And he was, and he, he well, was they're like, like the look, poor yeah. kid's got a problem with a heart valve. Yeah, he's getting called Dane Boysenberry. <laughs> Now, Ray, you're you got forty pounds on everyone at the school. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just keep them close. Anyone fucks with them, you go fuck with them. You never wow. forget the bully names, do you? I had Dustin Brody, Todd Geesey. Oh. <laughs> Todd Geesey called me Jello Jiggler. <laughs> There's a spit take waiting to happen. <laughs> Jello Jiggler. I mean, like again, the creativity. Penis oh, and tits kid. And it's was- clever, <laughs> but also a little on the nose. Like right. you, it's not as much. But Jello Jiggler, like you're digging deep. Like he came up song. with a list of ten and yeah. chose that one and brought it to Tuesday. Jiggle, yeah. jiggle, jiggle, those jigglers. There's a song. Yeah, that's right. The Jello Jigglers. Oh, yeah. It was there, a commercial. Thank God I didn't hear that. Yeah, I didn't it even know product. about that I, I didn't know there was a whole fucking campaign Jello behind Jiggler. this insult. <laughs> this picture is simultaneously cooler and way more pathetic than my sad picture from the same age. It's also from yeah. a team that doesn't exist anymore. Oh, yeah, my yeah. God. Who the fuck is that? <laughs> Brian. Adam would disagree. Brian, did you that have braces is, at that time? That is, Brian Bishop. Yeah. Oh, yeah, braces. Yeah, braces and oh, glasses. Zoom in. Yeah, yeah. Brian, I already have a special place in my heart for you. It just doubled in size, but dude. But dude, it's your point, Adam. You're 100 percent right. They only bullied you. Bully your friends or the guys you know that are in your circle. I didn't have any friends in middle school. I didn't oh, hang out with anyone. So I don't I believe I you. Get, I didn't get the nickname. There was no nickname. This right? kid was sending texts out at late night to like like group text to at, to people being like, "Hey, who's got a roof tonight? <laughs> who's got a roof we can party on?" <laughs> We have the Jello Jiggler commercial ready. Yeah. Oh, thank oh you. now hold on, Adam. You think this is going to be triggering? Oh, <laughs> you know what I'm look. Not good. Um, uh, Michael Strahan said, "What? What did he say? Bullying?" He is- said he was a fat kid. Yeah. He, I think, he grew up maybe in Germany on like an air. Or a dad was in the air force or stepdad or something wow, like fat that. Kid and the gap, huh? And they made fun of him, <laughs> called him fat all the time, like an older brother and stuff. And at some point, he's like, "I'm tired of being called yes. fat." Yes. And the problem, there's two things you can do when you're tired of being called fat. You could try to get to almost everyone in America and get them to stop calling you fat, <laughs> or you could internalize and yeah. lose some of that weight. Here's the commercial. We'll see what happens here. So, you thought he was creative enough to come up he, with Jello Jiggler? I did. Todd Geesey. I mean, he wore, he wore, he always wore bum 
uh, athletic. Oh, a bum. Uh, that. Yeah. Yeah. And I would retaliate by just calling him a bum. Oh, With like nice. maybe some LA gear, high tops. Yeah, some yes. candies. Some Zika Marie. <laughs> That's exactly the man. The bully wardrobe. <laughs> well, we got everyone's nick. Oh, all right. So, what is everyone's uh, horrible, horrible nickname? And um, <laughs> well, I, for those table. who didn't have a horrible nickname, I will just put you in the same corrals that people have never yacked because they drank too much. You've mm. you lived a charmed life. Thank hey, you. Can I tell you a secret? Mm. Never yet. Never yet from drinking. Wow. Never. I, what, I know I, a few people like that. That said, keep in mind, I have a oddly st- a stone stomach. Like mm-hmm. I went through. I'm on 13 years of multiple chemotherapies. Never once threw up. All That's right. wow. fucking crazy. Yeah. Yeah, you deserve a fucking plaque for that, dude. Well, I know Where's the fanfare music. You asked me a couple days ago, Adam. We were talking about, you know, like what we look like, you know, puberty. Um, maybe you could come up with a nickname for this hot little number. Mm. Um, oh, look me at and you! Me my dance recital Ouch. outfit. Yeah, Gee, big let's feather. Go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but so you know, not a lot. I mean, obviously, vagina still hurts. Vagina, it's good. <laughs> but um, yeah, this clever. is this is the 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 theater the theatrical girl you see before you. Speaking of Jello Jiggler, I cannot forget uh, the plus size gal from the fifth grade named Ella. Uh oh. And we did a multiple compound nickname for her, oh, which no. is Ella You Smella. <laughs> And you have a Bella, like a bowl full of Jella. That's good. Ooh. I think that was mine. And oh you get boy. the full rhyme. Yeah. You get the full rhyme, and you've covered two. Your life's a limerick. You've got the smella and the Jella. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. You know what? It's also, what hurts more? The creative, like, rhyming scheme, oh. you know, or just the, like, my buddy Adam French, uh, he went to college, University of Washington, with a girl freshman year mm. at, uni- at UW. First week, was in a sorority. Got so fucked up, she shit herself. Mm. And her nickname was Cassie Shitpants. <laughs> they didn't even, I, I, scouts on her. I was in the Cub Scouts for three years. Nobody touched me. I got a couple badges. My dad showed up to the final thing and saw me do a skit and said, good job. That was kind of cool. Um, that Chef Boyardee one man <laughs> show, man. That was, son, you just earned yourself some SpaghettiOs. I got the meatball, not a good the meatball badge. Yeah. 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 But I'm still going to leave. Uh, and so, uh, so he, um, uh, what the fuck was I just saying? He showed up. Oh, this, uh, shit pants. He said, no joke. I, I'm not making this up for the next two years. Everywhere. Like guys, the shit pants. Oh. Yeah. And then she transferred. Oh, you have to. Mm, you gotta leave. You have to. You don't have a You're going to stick around. No, you got to move. No. Also the, but so again, like, what hurts more? Like just that, just say your name and what you did. Yeah. Or like some sort of creative, because maybe the rhyme, she you could have laughed off. Or- Cassie right. Shitpants basically <laughs> is the husband of the wife who's the 10th grade school teacher, mm. teacher who has the affair mm. with the ninth grader mm. and the whole town knows right. it. They don't have to leave. You have to leave. That's right. You got to pack it in and go to Alaska. Mm-hmm. You guys tell me if this counts because the Jello thing reminded me a little bit. I was in the mid early nineties. I was uh, I talked a lot and I was annoying, and so my soccer my AYSO soccer team started calling me Mr. Game Show Host after that that toy that just yeah. just went. To, blah, 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 blah. I don't yeah. remember that. Oh, it was a toy. We had a oh you toy. can find. Does you that can, count? Yeah, it's 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 yeah, semi flattering. Yeah, it's semi flattering. I don't know. Is it? <laughs> We had a kid. You can find this, uh, Chris. <laughs> there was a commercial His mouth is for aggressive. a game for a toy called Mr. Mouth. Yikes. And we had a kid named Josh Starr, mm-hmm. and he was in the ninth grade, and we called him Mr. Mouth. Now, he had a big mouth, and he spoke a lot. But in the commercial, it's Mr. Mouth, Mr. Mouth, just can't keep his big mouth shut. And we even had a symbol for him. Oh, God. When we saw him, it was the fist. It wasn't. It was. It was a more. It was somewhere Black between. Black Panther. Well, it was somewhere between Heil Hitler and oh, Black Panther. Right. But it was the. It was the fist, and we just go. <laughs> we just open our. We silently bully. Oh. You know oh, what I mean? Wow. Because sometimes you're in class and yeah. you can't verbally can't get bully. One in, yeah. You need to sign. Well, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like like when the bullies 
makes a fist and yeah. he's punching his hand. <laughs> cuts you know? his throat. <laughs> cuts his throat. Remember, though, yeah, God, the threats, the silent yeah. threats, the fucking... By the way, what a crazy thing, looking back in hindsight, for a kid to look at another kid and go, I'm going to cut your fucking head off. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, that's worthy of a report or like Absolutely. some sort of a... a You're on a list yeah. at that point. We, yeah. have, we have the Mr. Mouth commercial, Thank if you God. guys remember that. It's... 1976. Oh my God. Mr. Oh my. Mouth, Mr. Mouth. It's Mr. Mouth, the new game from Tommy that can't keep his big mouth shut. <laughs> Mr. Mouth, Mr. Mouth. Try to flip your chips into his mouth before he closes it. Mr. Mouth, Mr. Mouth. First one out of chips is the winner. Mr. Mouth, Mr. Mouth. Mr. Mouth with batteries sold separately. Just can't keep his big mouth shut. <laughs> That's wow. what we would do is we would take that oh and then we would adopt it to right. bowling. Yeah. You know, right. How do we yeah. graph this on? How do we bring this Mr. Mouth onto campus? Can't keep his big mouth right. shut. And we just keep saying it over and over again. Fuck. That reminds me, there was one group of girls in high school that I do remember what they were called. I did not participate because that would be bad and I would never do that. But there, there were like, um, like five really kind of big girls. Mm-hmm. Oh. And um, they were always wore like witch outfits and oh, like boy. were like super into like the pagan vibe. Mm-hmm. And people called them, you know, remember the movie The Craft? Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. People called them The Craft, but like with a K, like Mac, Mac and Cheese. Oh, yeah, that's craft. solid. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah. That guy probably ended up riding for Conan. <laughs> that's just good stuff. It really is. Um, we have, uh, and I think poor, I remember we checked back, Chris, on poor Dane Boysen, who died several oh, years ago, I think, of, of whatever right. the genital disease he, Car accident. he had, but um, I do remember that. All right. Uh, well, can wait, I just quickly yes. point out, yeah, you on, back on Love Line, the Love Line days, and it hasn't come up in years, but you had a great... Uh, you just you had an acronym for Wiccan because we got a lot of calls from Wiccans back mm-hmm. then. That was a big thing in the nineties, early yes. two thousands. White, isolated, chubby chicks, and nature. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I, I am glad you remember that. I That's have, so good. <laughs> no, That's amazing. You don't remember that? I never met a spindly woman of color who was a Wiccan. And they love, every time I kept saying to them, like, what do you do? Like, tell me how it is. Like, we go, like, we recycle, yeah, we, we go to the woods, we convene. They just seem people like husky chicks who like to camp. We wear lace. What it, yes. Yeah. Wow. All great. right. We've got some uh, trending topics. Although, Chris, I don't know. I think I'd rather hear what everyone here was called in junior high. <laughs> Oh, what a time school. for Matt to leave. Yeah. Oh. I know. I, I, have one that, I have one for Matt, too. I, I know one of his. Well, okay. Also oh, also, my basketball coach and my fattest called me Krispy Kreme Abdul Jabbar. And that's, <laughs> that's not bad. really that's not bad. pretty good as far as being timely mm-hmm. and just, you know, topical. Yeah. And direct. <laughs> yeah. And accurate. And, and accurate. accurate. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, Adam's going to hang with us. We'll get to the rest of everyone's nicknames right after this. And now, Alcoa presents Definitely Not a Jew on the Adam Carolla Show. Dateline, New York City. A 54-year-old man was arrested for forcibly touching after groping a 14-year-old girl in Times Square. The man was dressed in an Elmo costume. Definitely not a Jew. We had a girl in high school. Her name is like Shelly Hyman. Oh. We just called her Buster. <clears throat> It's just simple. There was some simple yeah. stuff that way. Shelly Hyman. Well, when the name is, yeah, we had Michelle Virgin. Oh, uh, and, uh In high school, we had Bitch Ho. She was Vietnamese. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It was like Bitch, but like, but bitch right. there's a hyphen. Sure. Right. And I remember uh, you gotta uh, lead into a kid that in class shit. would be like, your mom, uh, some kid one time was like, and she was pretty cool about it. He was like, your mama's a hoe. Your daddy's a hoe. Like, your yeah. grandma's a hoe. And she's like, yes, you're right. That's true. <laughs> Yeah. Accurate. <laughs> we had Ho. we uh, had a girl's last name was Hoback, oh. but she was really popular and really pretty, so no one sure. was allowed to make fun of her. But who among us didn't have a glass cock in their class? Oh yeah, we had a glass cock. I wish. We didn't. Uh, <laughs> I wish, let's says. not let's not forget that being really pretty or being you know captain of the football team, you could. Oh. 
overcome. Yes. Like oh, your, yeah. your, your name could be Douche Bukaki, but if you're starting <laughs> you're a quarterback, right. you could you're overcome immune. this. Yes. And if you're a hot chick that everyone wanted yes. to fuck, you could over you transcend this. It's true. There was a kid in our middle school. He was a cool kid. He was good looking, had the blonde hair, everything. He had the name right. Evan ate a lot. Wow. A-Y-D, A-Y-D. God, that's not I, I did, But he was just, he was cool, so he didn't make fun of him. By the yeah. way, Douche Bukaki <laughs> is opening for Wayne Newton at the Mirage. <laughs> really? July 20, so I don't want to promote other people's dates, but uh, I forgot, and I can't believe I forgot this one as we're speaking in the uh, theme starts of- Starts this act with raindrop or something. <laughs> keep falling on my head, but that's not the kind Douche Bukaki is like, can cover so many bases. It's also like a number one draft pick. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Who, what was the um, Kush? What was his name in Jerry Maguire that Jerry O'Connell played? Yeah, Kush. Oh, what yeah. was his first name? Brian Cushman. Or yeah, something, something like yeah. Douche Bukaki has the same type of like Doug Flutie, mm-hmm. Ben Roth. Like it's got a punchy quarterback, <laughs> it's, rapey. It's like it, but I yeah. bet Doug Flutie wouldn't trade. <laughs> <laughs> the no, no, no. Right. If he was ever in a situation and he found himself in an Uno game, a high stakes Uno game, you know, Doug, you can uh, you obviously don't have enough to cover. If you want to trade your name, we'll give you a new name right now instead of that watch. Well, what's the name? Douche Bukaki. Just take my fucking watch, uh, yeah, but dude. he had a cereal that would have to be called Bukaki Flakes because <sighs> that's going to be a tough one to pitch. He had fluty flakes. Yeah. That he sold for a while. Oh, boy. And, and they get Tony the Tiger to do the, uh, but he, instead of they're great, he goes, it's jizz. <laughs> <laughs> with a magical frosting. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, this name I forgot in high school. Ready for it? So I told you Michelle Virgin. I told you bitch ho. I can't believe I forgot this. She has since changed it. Ready? Audrey Klitgard. Oh. That's not possible. That's not. Okay. No okay. Way. Get out of here. K-L-I-T-G-A-R-D. <laughs> wow. Klitgard. She changed it, I believe, to Johnson. Really? <laughs> yep. No joke there. Just real facts. <laughs> Johnson Click Guard. Johnson Click Guard. I didn't even know what a clip was, and I still thought it was funny. <laughs> like, I was like, how do you get that at Ellis Island? <laughs> yeah, Dick all right. Dick Sponge was taken. Uh, Dawson, you probably didn't have anything good. <laughs> no, good. I didn't. I In elementary school, uh, the kids started calling me Doggy. That's yeah. cool. And that wasn't very Dawson had clever. a remarkably yeah. But it was life. meant to be mean. It was? But it, yeah. Yeah. But it, you know that I got the same. I got uh I got Crayola. Oh good yeah. one. Uh, I've had yeah. failed. Most popular yeah. uh you yeah. know, coloring instrument uh yeah. of the last five yeah. years. It just yeah. didn't land. It didn't land. Kid no, on the stick. middle school playground taught to call, call me bitch mop. Like pesh up. That's pretty right. good. Oh, we get it. Didn't catch. That's still kind of cool. It sounds like an underground <laughs> punk band. Didn't catch for obvious reasons. Like, didn't yeah, they open for a dashboard confessional? Keep, keep workshopping. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bitch mob. I like that. Gary Smith, did you have anything? Gary Smith was the name of my one of my football coaches, by the way. It's a strong name. Yeah, yeah. yeah he did. Uh, my the Gary Smith <laughs> football coach bullying to me was he looked at me after practice once and he went, uh, Adam. You're awesome. Uh, sometimes you're good. Oh, uh, sometimes good. you're bad. Good right? dad yes. Yes. Good. Oh. Nice little dig there, yeah. Coach Coach Smith. Yeah. Thanks, mm-hmm. Coach Smith. Do you want me yeah. to tell your wife what you're uh, doing on the weekends in Rancho Cucamonga? <laughs> That's exactly what I said to him. <laughs> For really? No. <laughs> For really? <laughs> yeah. I'm very gullible. <laughs> Sorry. Gary, do you have something good? Uh, I didn't like it, but uh, Gary. Mm. Oh sure, That's always yeah. Yeah. standard. Yeah, Basic. Yeah. Gary, yeah. my fraternity. Straight, straight yeah. ahead. Yeah, yeah. Solid. never gonna go wrong with it. <laughs> yeah, I can... never gonna go wrong. Gary, yeah, yeah. That's solid. Chris, uh, anything from you? Uh, yeah. Well, I have I have other stuff too. Emmy, they called him, and he went to school in New York. The Argentinian gorilla. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus Christ! <laughs> kind of a hate crime. Yeah. Right? Oh uh-huh. shit! Yeah. Dress it up. It's <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> awesome. It's mm-hmm. time. He's not really built like a lowland, but more of a midland gorilla. That feels like a street those. fighter character. Like a silverback. And in this corner. Right. Yeah. The Argentinian Facing gorilla. Blanca. What was That's it? Right. Was it a Blanca? A Blanco? A Blanca. Yeah. Huh? The, the kind of the big gargoyle. Baraka? Baraka? What? Is that what it was? No, the Blanca. The, uh, the, he was like Blanca. a gargoyle lion combination. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Is and that then, a griffin? Oh no, that's a flying line. All right, what do you got, Chris? <laughs> uh, my mine was they would they either uh, I was named by an o- a girl in an older class. That's fun. Yeah, she called me Little Nemo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That just meant she wanted you to finger her. Mm-hmm. I, little Nemo. What's that? And, and I was, I was I oh, that's him. Little Nemo. It was a cartoon character. Oh, oh okay. Little and then, Nemo. Uh, well, that's and then, cute. That's that's yeah. uh that's a uh, you know that's an infectious, affable, yeah. right, endearing. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's and like then, her. That's the whole like they're picking on you because they like you thing. Mm-hmm. No, no. 
Oh, I wish I would have capitalized on that. And then if she was like uh, little dick Chris with a <laughs> pussy ass bitch face, then you probably would have been like, all right. Yeah, I was also called Butterball for- too. Oh, Again, butterball. adorable. Butterball. Yeah. Mm, I don't know. Butterball. Oh, I was fat. I was really yeah. fat. Oh, the yeah, turkey. That's, that's uh, the fat thing. Class. Oh, butterball's a fat brand, yeah? Uh, anytime you word ball, it's like. They make like turkeys and triple X pants, or what do they do? <laughs> I had a fat Mexican kid that his dad called Bodo La Casa. It was just ball of cheese. You know <laughs> oh, what God. I mean? So, <laughs> okay. But that was oh, his dad, dude. so I guess we could join in. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. I had a Spanish teacher of all. A teacher! Nicknamed me Gordin Flas, which is like fat clown, like fat. They don't, Jesus, they, yeah. the Hispanics don't mince words. You know what I mean? Like they're like I, I think about it a lot. Like if you picture, I was thinking about this when I was driving that day. They they call now. It seems quaint because you're saying Boda La Casa or right. Gordo or something right. like that. But it means fat. Yeah, there's it's a like, TV show called El Gordo y la Flaca. Anyone who speaks Spanish just hears you saying fat yeah. to a 13 year old. No. But I realize they're a, a group that uh, they don't. They're not. They're not into subtlety. No nuance. You know, they go right, Ooh. right at Obvioso. every problem. And I always notice that, like, if you take a look, I was driving behind one of those cube trucks, and you know they have those like Sutton Farms, and they'll if it's a beef company, it has a majestic picture of a cow, yeah. like in a pristine field, you know, just so looking crazy. almost noble, right. bucolic. When you go to, to like the Mexican butcher. Mm. Mr. Cow has like a monocle and a top hat, and, and he's chasing Mrs. Chicken with a hatchet, you know? And it's like, oh, these people go right at yeah. it. Yeah. They They're let you know. Around. They lack subtlety. Yeah. We don't even call, you know, pigs. We we call it we have we have pork yeah, or we have pork. we have our our names. Yeah. We don't like to think about yeah. them being humans or people mm-hmm. or wearing top hats or anything. <laughs> they they go right at it. You're you're fat, your name is fat. <laughs> That's how it is. Let me wrap up the Gordine Floss saga because uh, the, I got so tired of this after a couple of days. I went home. <laughs> yeah, a couple of days. I went home and I, he, was a, he was a man of diminutive stature uh, mm. and Mr. Aparicio. You looked something up. I looked up Shorty. Oh, I looked no. up Shorty. Chapato. I said, he's like, he's like, eh, Gordin Flas. In class the next day, eh, what's the answer? Gordin Flas. And I'm like, oh, well, I'll tell you what, Chapato. And he's like, very good. Oh, <laughs> no, really? I know you're a game recognized game. Que bueno. I like right. that. That's right. I, I'm glad. And it ended that day. It oh, really? Day. Never did it again. Interesting. Gave it right back to him. Speak. So, oh, go ahead. So it's fat. What? It's like fat clown. If someone oh, knows, clown. someone knows <laughs> Spanish, maybe it has a more nuanced <laughs> meaning. Well, to be fair <laughs> to him and all that, all who <laughs> was around you at that time, <laughs> if you're fat. You better zip it, oh. because you start popping off, and you're mm-hmm. fat. They come back. They're not. If you're skinny and you're popping off, they go shut up. Yeah. You're fat and you pop off. They call you fat and tell you to shut up. Right. You can't. Yeah. Nobody mm-hmm. makes fun of you for being too skinny, do they? No. I don't think I ever saw that. No. There was. You, you got the bean pole every once in a while, but that never. That never yeah, really. But the skinny worked. kids took it in stride. They were like, "Yeah, I'm going to see my fifties. Keep it coming." <laughs> right. The uh, so wait, Matt Fondaliers was what, Chris? Oh yeah, so uh, he hurt his foot and he had to walk around school in crutches. But the crutches ended up hurting his hands for a while. Uh, so he he got he bought gloves, and so oh, God. so all the kids start calling him gloves, and he hated it. And even if you called it if you called him that today, he would hate it. Gloves. Well, yeah. there's also I forgot about this. You know the other one we forgot about. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel was traumatized because his dad at some point retired his attache case. And what is that? Briefcase. Gotcha. And Fancy he briefcase. thought that it would be cool to, instead of carrying the backpack, oh, put the books and uh, the trapper keeper and the yeah. pens in yeah. a briefcase oh, and boy. show up. You know, let them know you're all business at school <laughs> oh, <God>. when you're <laughs> yeah. 14. You know how people care so about that. So they just did this. Now, this is the other modification that people we, we've not touched on yet. They just called him Joe Briefcase. Mm. You just put oh, the word sure. Joe sure. in front of something, That's and fine. now you yeah. could you could do it. He, but I feel like, A, he brought that on himself, and yeah. B, he probably internalized it. Too much. Too much. That's well, it? Oh, yeah. God, no, well, I was thinking don't. our friend Randy Wang. You he know, blamed yeah. his mom for letting him do it. Of course. <laughs> this is like my dog told me to kill. I love that. Well, it's like when my mom helped me write my speech running for um, uh, uh, treasure in the fourth grade. And I uh, went up there and I, in front of the whole school, she helped me write this opening line. If you vote for me, I'll make sure we get McDonald's every day. Beat not. Oh, oh boy. Is it good? It I don't bombed. know. I heard no, one teacher bombed. in the back go, ha, 
Yeah. And then I went home crying because the whole, I, I mean, it was downhill after that. I panicked. Then I started going, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, uh, farts are funny and uh, teachers suck and uh, boobs rule. What? And so uh, I went home and I was like, fuck you, mom. That line sucked. And she was like, well, you didn't have anything better. Well, oh, what boy. should they have been? I, I remember. I like, this is why dad left. I remember going to an assembly in the ninth grade. And and I don't know if this speech was was vetted by the parent, but I'm guessing that if you're running for student body president, you're going to give a speech huh. in front of the assembly. You got you're to run it by mom and dad. Yeah. Got to put put an ear on it at least. She did this thing where she went, um, everybody stand up, stand up, and people were like, huh? Stand up, stand up, everybody stand up, stand up, and everyone went, all right, and everyone like stood up, and then she went. Now everyone sit down and people went, okay. And they sat down and then she went, if I can get you to do that, Ooh. I can fix the student union or whatever. Doesn't and we're like, sense. fuck you, Whoa. bitch. What? Now you think, you think her dad was like a motivational speaker yeah. or did some corporate gigs or something. And oh he used God. that. As, he went to a free Tony Robbins, like web seminar right. or, you know, like a that's little, definitely what that's, yeah, from. that's not take a, your own fist. Put it in your own <laughs> pussy. Uh, right. If I can get you to do if it fits, then you can stay. If yeah, it doesn't, you're not getting a refund and you have to leave through that tiny door. Did did so your totally. mom told you the build everyone up with the McDonald's yeah. and then take the it misdirect. all away. A classic misdirect, yeah. but also a giant disappointment. Yeah. My nickname should have been penis and tits kid slash bummer. Yeah. Because you're just that's no one's living up to that. And it's also a, a an empty promise. And, mm. um, but I guess I don't know what she, you but know, you, you can never go. Maybe that, my delivery was off. You can't That's go that. It. Yeah. It. You Mom. can't. It's like, basically you get in front of a, a you know, pro business crowd and go, I'm going to make the corporate rate 20%, not 40. <laughs> like, it's just not, it's not going to work in front yeah. of that crew. But, and also, I mean, to her credit, not was, that was, was not, that was it was hot. Not it was, was hot up there with time. as if. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. It, was, was it was pre, that's what she said. Right. Mm-hmm. But it was like, mm-hmm. people said it. And it was like, a, if, you know, my, uh, you know, I don't know what her comedic influences were at that time, but she definitely was Wayne like, I think this will work. I think this will mm-hmm. crush. Yeah. 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 I don't think happen. she was trying to set me up for failure, but. Chris had a girl to school with a bad rhyme as well. Yeah. She was, she was a bigger girl at the time. Uh, <laughs> oh God. Her name was Porsche. Uh oh! And, like uh, and this is headed. The, from middle school till like high school, the everybody knew the song was "Hey Porsche, baby, you got those Cheetos, don't you eat those?" And hey, it was just Porsche. Wow! Yeah, baby, you got the Cheetos, don't you eat those? Uh, yeah. I said, hey. hey, that's horrible. Yeah. Oof, I know. It's rough. It was, yeah, and uh, the one who taught me it was her boyfriend. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. oh God! Wait, she had a boyfriend? Yeah, doing yeah. better than I was. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he wrote the song The Twist. His name is Chubby Chaser. <laughs> Let's, Let's twist eat again. again like we did <laughs> last summer. <laughs> Chubby Chaser, everybody. <laughs> the briefcase thing is a good example of it can do either way, depending on if you're cool or not. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? If you're not cool, that gets made fun of. If you are cool, it's like, oh, that's a new thing. We, we had a kid yeah. in the ninth grade who just had a huge key ring. Mm. Just a so huge. He had a key, like a janitor, but sure. he was fourteen. Was it retractable? And he had a shirt back when putting iron-on letters on a shirt meant you came from a well-to-do family. Oh boy! Like you know, you had to have some box if you had a oh, T-shirt that had iron. something on Dude. it, and uh, other, other than you know the yeah. Zodi's logo or right. something like. He, and he had the shirt. And it just said, "Call me Keys," and he just walked around and his keys jangling, and it worked. He made it work. Ah, it worked. It worked on him. We call them keys. It worked. So I don't it, know who he is. We call them keys. Around seventh grade and the middle school was six, seven, eight for me, right? So for all, for all of sixth grade up until then, I was like, no one, no one wore like a jersey to school, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I got a sweet Will Clark Giants jersey, like for my birthday or whatever it was. And I'm like, I'm wearing this fucking shit to school. I worked to school and all day. Hey, Will. What's up, Will? Hey, All right. Will. Yeah, right. Never wore it again. Mm. Never yeah. wore it no. again. My, my husband, I couldn't pull it off. It wasn't cool. Yeah. That's, my husband was, was into jerseys as well. And he had a, an Orlando Magic jersey that like he loved more than anything. Not from mm-hmm. Orlando. Doesn't know anything about Orlando. But loved that jersey. And he had big, giant goggles he would have to wear for basketball. So everyone called him Goggle Boy. Mm. It's all right. Yeah. It's not as painful like Kurt Rambis or... Uh, mm. If he was wearing the magic jersey, maybe call him, I don't know, Horse AIDS. Grant. Yeah. <laughs> Horse Grant, yeah. 
Uh, John Sally, by the way, is oh, coming good. in here right. in a second. Fuck yeah. Speaking of uh, NBA greats, so we'll love that talk guy. to him in a second. I do want to throw out some plugs for uh, Adam Wright. Irvine Improv, that'll be uh, today through uh, Sunday. First Great. time there, baby. First time there? Well, first time doing a weekend. I've been down oh. there for one-nighters and you know features galore, and and uh, but first time doing a weekend, so nice. pumped. Um, and features galore sounds like uh, a Bond <laughs> secretary, right? She's hot. Yeah. She's very hot, yeah. Yeah. Um, do you when you go to Irvine now? Do you stay down? I'm there? staying there this weekend. Yeah. Okay. So well, like, I have so many friends from uh, from college that live down there, and people that are making the trip down to also like make a night of it. Some friends that are coming for the birthday. It's going to be one of those weekends where it's like it's work for me, and I'm very pumped. But like I. I have to find a balance with the hang. There's so many people that are like, dinner before and then birthday hang after the shows. And I was like, yeah, but then I got to do two more on Saturday and one Sunday so I can't get fucked up Friday. I'm already just getting anxiety over the amount of socializing right. in between shows. It's a lot, you know? Um, Wait, so it's your birthday this weekend? No, my buddy's birthday. Uh, oh. Two different buddies' birthdays that are coming Excited. with groups and I then see. want me to party with them after. You got to do an Irish goodbye, not a Jewish goodbye. Just sneak what's the Jewish it. goodbye? You fucking oh, say to, goodbye, you to never everybody. leave. Yeah, that's right. It takes three hours. Yeah. The the prop. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm all Irish goodbye. Uh, there's a thing which is weird. Like there's 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 times when you're like bored off your ass, mm. and then at other times you have too much shit going on. Yes, exactly. And you get some DM from some guy that says, come join us at our suite at the Indianapolis mm. 500. Mm. And you go, oh God, like where were you when I was 22 and totally. living in a fucking garage <laughs> totally. with my stepmom yelling at me to leave? Like where were you with <laughs> yes. all this shit? Yes. Then you find out that weekend's the same weekend. You're supposed to do some club or yep. something. Mm. And it's like this embarrassment of scheduling riches. Something we've been sitting on for a million years, which is um, a Bobby Hollander, Paul Thomas Anderson Boogie Nights commentary. Now, what? I was discovered Bobby Hollander many years ago. Paul Thomas Anderson, famously <laughs> Boogie Nights creator, director, writer. I guess he wrote it yeah, as well. Both. both. Uh, he grew up in the valley with me mm -hmm. about the same time. So there's a probably a better than not chance he'd heard of Bobby Hollander. Sure. As well, and somebody pointed out to us that during the outtakes for the movie, the, the, the DVD commentary, DVD oh commentary. Sorry, he was explaining that there was a guy named Bobby Hollander with the great Burt Reynolds. Sorry, you can play it. You know, I have to say, just because I thought of this, you know, what a lot of this stuff com comes from. There's a there's a series of blooper tapes that were made that were available, you know, that you can find in the porno section, like porno outtakes. And boy, I got a lot of stuff from that. Just, you know, you can instantly kind of witness, you know, what the stuff is like Marker. beyond action and cut, you know what I mean? And it was great. You know, there's this Bobby Hollander series, this guy named Bobby Hollander that was a lot of basis for Jack, who's this kind of director, producer guy who would kind of sit by this bank of video monitors, you know, and introduce each clip like, this is the time that lovely Linda farted on camera as she was getting fucked in the ass. You know, he would do all this stuff, and then he said, now roll the tape. And then you'd go to the tape, and you'd see, you know, lovely Linda fart or, you know, poop or something like that. And the whole crew would crack up and run in, and you'd see all the interaction between of the whole crew, and it was just fucking great, you know? And it really helped sort of highlight stuff for me. Bobby Hollander, the muse. Wow, wow. name checked, I, as he should be. It's funny, because when I st I did start thinking about Boogie Nights mm -hmm. and Bobby sure. Hollander, and I was like, he had to the world's somehow collide. creep into sure. Paul Thomas Anderson's Consulting psyche credit. at some point. No, I'm sorry. You guys waited how many months to get this Bobby Hollander bloopers and nary a word about lovely Linda farting on anybody? I, I, I saw it. You did? Yeah. Did she fart on somebody? I know that should have yeah. been in his pitch for the yeah, whole uh, movie that was, you know, it's strictly adult. <laughs> it's so hot it's going to make your balls blow off. Your panties will get wetter than a piss-filled bucket. You guys watching are going to be in the bathroom pulling your wang-wang. <laughs> Lovely Linda's going to fart and poop at the same time <laughs> on accident. It's no hoke. It's no joke. It's a choke, if you like that. I hope you have new batteries for your vibrators. We're going <laughs> to... Did, wait, Chris. Did we? Did you audibly hear the fart? Uh yeah. You could. You could hear it. It. It's. But it's like it. We. There's no way we could have played that on air. It's. Just, it's very. Very. It's in the middle of a scene. 
So. Mm-hmm. Well, we could hear it, right? Yeah, and 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 they definitely comment on it too. <laughs> That's all I want to hear. That's all we want to hear. There's probably Chris. even like uh, a... let me let me oh, God, come let me on, scrub man. through this thing. Again. Sorry. Yeah, we gotta oh, know if it's like a poor... classic funny fart, like you know, in that environment, or if it's just like you know something that just you know falls by the wayside. If if it was enough for the crew to run in and start laughing, I, I gotta hear this. It had to have been a home run, yeah. <laughs> It had to have been a kid with every flavor of Dunkaroos in his ass. I don't, I don't <laughs> judge the porn star farting because no. I now fart as I get off the sofa. Sure, I could imagine just no, being jamming it. Hound yeah. doggy style by Ron Jeremy. Definitely, there'd be a release. Sure, there has you know? to be. Yeah, and maybe just to get him to back up a little bit. You know what I mean? Just like like. Like what? Like, like when like a, a li- skunk? when a it's lizard tail falls off. Right. Yes. You know what I mean? Just to get away it's from a survival the survival mode. Yeah. Survival mode. That's yeah. right. What if that was like his calling card? You remember how like the wet bandits in Home Alone That's like right. turn on the faucets? What mm-hmm. if that was Ron Jeremy's thing where he's like, "I'm gonna fuck you so hard, you're gonna fart on my dick." And they're like, "Anyway, my name's Stephanie. So <laughs> excited for the scene today." I'll ask him next time I visit him. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, uh, Blinds Galore, BlindsGalore.com does one thing. They do it better than anyone. 100% custom window treatments built to your exact measurements over 20 years and over 2 million windows covered. Do it all from your home. Just takes a few minutes. Take a couple simple measurements and then uh, you can build your custom blinds right on their website. This is a mother-daughter team, if I recall. They do great products. I have them in the edit bays, have them in the bedroom, have it every property I have. I have blinds galore in the windows. All blindsgalore.com products are hand-built from scratch, delivered right to your door, and created just for your windows. Plus, they have a watertight guarantee. If you don't love what you ordered, you can exchange it for something you do love, it's Blinds Galore, right, Dawson? It's easy to get the custom blinds and shades you've always wanted in your home at BlindsGalore.com. Order up to 15 free samples and get started today. Go out to check out Blinds Galore and let them know that we sent you. That's BlindsGalore.com. All right. Uh, Chris is scrubbing through our porn bloopers. Beautifully. Can I um, do something real special here yes. before I leave? Um, mm-hmm. First of all, thanks for plugging my dates. Irvine Improv this uh, weekend. And I have a YouTube special live from the Punchline in San Francisco dropping April 20th on my YouTube page. Check that out. Um Lax, I got you a nice special bottle of whiskey to commemorate your uh, new uh, new wedding. Uh, your your um, I don't know if you guys have any sweet nicknames for each other yet, but pour this on each other, lick it off. <laughs> I'm sure you do that already with syrup and gushers. Um, I didn't get to say bye to Fondelier. Didn't get to mm-hmm. give him a proper send off or, mm-hmm. or, uh, or jerk off. So I'd like to. Um, I have a special uh, friend that would like to read a, a real quick uh, poem for him. If you don't oh. mind, cue me up some tunes. <clears throat> <clears throat> well, hey guys, Doctor Phil here. And look, uh, life's all about choices, and, and a choice has been made uh, to relocate, and that's fine, okay? I wrote a little poem to my uh, newly departed friend, uh, Matt, otherwise known as Gloves. <laughs> Roses are red, violets are blue. There's only one man I fantasized about, and it's you. From the way your eyes sparkle to the way you send mail, I'm impressed your conversations never get stale. I love your heart, your compassion, your dedication to the job, and how you have the face of a mat, but the body of a rob. <laughs> Off to Austin you go, where strange wieners you'll blow, but L.A. will always be home. I love you to death, more than SpaghettiOs and meth. I'll miss your head, your lips, your pussy, and your crack. Don't be a stranger, Gloves. We'll be right back. <laughs> Oh, excellent. I need a minute. Excellent That's work. That's beautiful. Love you, Maddie. All right, uh, four-time NBA champion, John Sally is waiting unless Chris found Bobby Hollander. <laughs> In which case, cancel the day. <laughs> yeah. Can't see him like I normally do because Brian's hoodie. hood is hanging off hoodie. his back. But Chris? I'll, no, I haven't found it yet. I'll let, I'll let you know. Why not circle that one initially? Too grotesque? Yeah. I, I Yes, it was. Oh, God. Oh. For Gina? <laughs> no. That's like that. the, the, I've I've done less grotesque things, and I've had emails sent from uh, those the, the powers oh. that be that said oh, we shouldn't okay. be doing yeah. that. You're making Pay the right wall. call. Pay wall. <laughs> yeah. All right. I can get Cassie shit pants on the phone if you need to fill a couple minutes. You can just, I don't know. Again, Adam Ray, what you should do is check out all his dates at adamraycomedy.com. Old friend John Sally in studio right after this. The Adam Carolla Show presents John Sally's Birthday Cocktail Party for May 16th. Let's see who's invited. Let's welcome American serial killer associated with 27 deaths, H.H. H. Holmes. 
Actor Henry Fonda is here. Composer Jan Zimmer. Baseball Hall of Famer and the namesake for Billy Ball, Billy Martin. Danny Trejo joined the party. Singer for the Chiffons, Barbara Lee. The guy who played sax in Bob Seger's band, the aptly named Alto Reed. Now it's a party. Liberace just walked in. Deborah Winger is here. Pierce Brosnan. Tucker Carlson. Tori Spelling. Janet Jackson joined the party. And Megan Fox. John Sally on the Adam Carolla Show. First player to win a championship with three different franchises. First player to win a championship in three different decades. Man, has anyone else managed to do that since? No. There's, there's been players who um, won three championships with three teams. That was... Um, LeBron did it. No. it was. Oh, yeah, but I mean... Uh, oh, after you, obviously. Before, yeah, it was Robert Ori and then... Uh, Something in two different decades was Tim Duncan, but none of them as sexy as me. No, <laughs> no, 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 obviously. No. Yeah, you are. I remember uh, flying with uh, John Sally. We're out doing a TV show, and he, he just flew. I used to feel real sorry for myself being 6'2 and flying on Southwest Airlines sure. until I sat next to John, <laughs> who's, I don't know, are you seven? Seven foot. Seven foot flying Southwest. How is that physically possible? I do yoga. Yes. <laughs> no, but seriously, it's to the point where I had to adapt to small things my entire life because like walking through that door, even though it was tall enough, I still duck. Just have it. No, no, you're you're correct. As a guy who hung doors for a living, mm -hmm. it's eight oh. It's eighty inches. It's six eight. Yep. So anytime you meet someone who's six seven plus, you're putting the shoes on and stuff. Right. Anybody, anybody yeah. who's over six eight is it has to duck on just about every sort of standard residential opening yeah. on the fucking planet. Right. What I do like is every cage in a car is the same. Well, I learned that on the show. Oh. I did I, on our show. We did uh, big man, small cars. Right. <laughs> and I, <laughs> they did so, they made me jump out of a plane. Yeah. They did so many things wrong to me. I was like, yo, this is not right. But I loved it. But you're a very eclectic guy. I mean, yeah. you're not what people picture as the standard NBA guy. Are you vegan still? Yeah, I'm vegan. Um, I don't watch sports, I do crypto show. I got mm -hmm. John Sally Crypto Show dot com. Everybody check that out. I do everything other. That's why I love doing the car show. I learned so much. I realized I didn't know sugar, honey, iced tea about cars. <laughs> and then I got, what was that Sega, uh, what's that track up there? Laguna Seca. Uh, yeah. I got the. That's fun, being, right? I Remember they had me in an automated car, a BMW, before right. anybody knew what was happening. And I was no fear letting this computer drive me around the track at 160 miles per hour. Yeah, it was a BMW 3 Series, I think, was automated. And I think by law, you had to sit in the driver's seat, mm -hmm. but you didn't touch the steering wheel. And this is 15, 14 years ago, yeah. whatever it is. Terrifying. The car, this is before, you know, we still haven't really worked it right. out. But, but at it's least we've seen it. Pre-Elon yeah. Musk and whatever he's doing right. over there with Tesla and you just sat there and it, it took you it took you around the track. Mm -hmm. I'm going to Laguna Seca in a week, by the really? way, and doing a car race. So Do you ever win those races? That's no. really hurtful to you would ask. <laughs> I'm just wondering. No, I won I, well I won the Toyota Celebrity Grand Prix and then the Pro Division. So I won two there mm -hmm. and I came in third in my last professional Trans Am race. All you have to do is come in third. You just got to, you get up on the podium, you spray the champagne. Nobody you, remembers you, who's you who. Know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm not going to win because I'm in with a bunch of professional Trans Am drivers who mm -hmm. were, you know, they're at Road Atlanta one weekend, then they're at Sears Point the next weekend. This is just their stop. Right. I'm yeah. joining them in their stop, but they drive these cars and that's all they do. That's so all they do. It's not going to work. It's not, it's not as easy as everybody thinks, let me tell you. Not as easy as everyone thinks. It is, it is the best thing about it. It was no music in the car. You have to focus. You got to keep all four wheels down. I, I, I mean, I did a, a show on ABC, Fast Car and Superstars. I got beat by Serena Williams. Um, 
<laughs> but We're but it was so way. fun. Yeah, you know. Yeah, she beat me up. So besides that, I I fell in love with race cars. Now I, I watch Formula One and I'm um I'm two feet in. You watch that Drive to Survive show on Netflix? No. Oh, it's really good. It's the really? entire F one season. They just follow it around. It's like a it's wow. a soap opera for Formula One because you know, there's a lot of drama and there's a lot of infighting mm. and there's table know, flipping. Each team will have like two cars, but what happens when your own teammate spins you out? You know what I mean? Mm. What's it like going back to the paddock after that? Mm-hmm. Every the, the whole thing about whether whether it's you on the 101 or F1, the highest the, the at the highest realm of automotive competition. Everyone thinks it wasn't their fault when there's a crash. <laughs> you can see the film of like two guys just diving in on each other in a turn, and they're both equally pissed, and they both think it's the other guy's fault. And it doesn't matter if you show them videotape of it or not. It's always, that was my corner. Mm-hmm. But the problem is, is you can't have three guys going, that was my corner. <laughs> It could be our corner. <laughs> it, it needs to be our corner. That's right. And it's always like, that's mine. And they're pissed off. And uh, they're great because they're miniature people for the most part. And when miniature people have a tantrum, it, it, it's just elevated. You know, it's like why like gymnasts are small. It's like their right. hands are flying around. They're stomping. Right. They stomp away from the car. Their helmets are still on. They get out of the car. They're very disgusted. Oh, wow. I'm saying miniature people for now on. Mm-hmm. It's my new thing. Yeah, see, you wouldn't make well, a good you. F1 driver. No, so yeah, you know, we're all miniature, miniature person. <laughs> you know, we walked up to me. Speaking of miniature people, I'm wondering if if Mr. Sally had a good nickname in high school or middle Spider. school. Spider. Yeah, Spider Sally. Yeah, John Spider. But th- that started in like middle school. High school. Yeah, it started oh, in high okay. school because I was, I went to I went to college to Georgia Tech at six nine 175 pounds Damn. so i look like a daddy long leg spider mm. that's what they used to say is a spider and then i just thought it was cooler because my real name is johnny <laughs> and i was like i think i'm gonna go with spider sally every and when i got down playing in school the guy was like okay coming up is john sally and i went i said say spider for now <laughs> <laughs> he would announce you that way in high school yeah John Spider Sally and they were like nice. wow got a nickname <laughs> you and Rodman both had growth spurts in college yeah, yeah I, I grew I grew not that often yeah I grew three inches in college damn yeah it was a big trip. three body body, <laughs> <laughs> body was hurting too <laughs> man still does wow would uh and I guess see, we were talking about horrible nicknames but you had a cool yeah of course you had a cool nickname well Dennis's nickname was Worm that's oh, a, the worm, right. right. That's terrible. There, there's <laughs> nothing good about the worm. It is terrible, but I guess the ultimate tip of the cap is when you can take your shitty nickname and turn it, it into cool. something cool, though. Yeah. I guess he never what's, got What's there. a shitty nickname we got? The worm. The worm. The worm. <laughs> But that's I bet a, he likes it. I, I, you know, you don't know what he likes nowadays. <laughs> I, I only see him at a distance, and when I do see him, once again, he doesn't talk. So I mm. just, hey, big, what's up, big dog? I love you. I love you too. I love you too. <laughs> walks away. That's it. You know, it's weird that he he wasn't a chatty guy. He doesn't mm-hmm. do a lot of talking. No. But it's weird that he was such an extrovert who didn't talk. Well, he it was funny. His company was called the Rodman Group, always in the spotlight. So he knew how to turn it on when the lights was on. Mm-hmm. And then he would turn it up when the lights was <laughs> off. But he, was, uh, <laughs> he wasn't he was a talker. He, was a, he wasn't like, um, hey, he was always a whisperer, always showing up in places. And he was doing things way before. I mean, one time we, we, we were waiting for him. Uh, there's certain plays that you wait, the plane would wait on, and there's certain <laughs> plays you got to go get a commercial flight if you're late. The plane would wait on Dennis. And he showed up running. He had on combat boots and ripped up jeans. Mm-hmm. So everybody was like, what happened? What happened? And he was like, this is style. What do you mean? Uh-huh. What happened? And I was like, you got holes in your knees and almost in your butt area. That's that's not a style. And it's a style. Damn. Now we're seeing it. Mm-hmm. So he was he was definitely ahead of his time. Definitely. Did you watch the, the uh, Last Dance series? The, yeah, uh, I was in it. I know. I, I was not. My follow up question was: If you watched it, how did you feel like how you were portrayed? I mean, the I was boys, portrayed well. You were actually. Yeah. Wait, you the way you said court. that. Other people, but Isaiah wasn't. I know. Uh, Scotty mm, didn't like how he was displayed. I, I I think they you know given Michael. Uh, cognac and a cigar for two hours is not a, a, a good thing. Like it's a great thing. That's a great thing <laughs> well, for it got, the production. It got out. Okay, he doesn't talk either, right? right? So for him 
for them to show him video and then him to go back in his memory banks. I mean, I don't remember one game I've ever played in the NBA. Not no one shit. game. But I can tell you every concert I've been to. Even finals games? <laughs> no. Wow. Because it's, it's you know, you got to convince yourself it's just a game. Then you have to convince yourself to do what you practice. And then you got to, in your mind, that guy across from you sucks and he's trying to take your house and <laughs> embarrass your family. So I, I was in a kill mode all the time. Mm. And then uh, I was able... Chuck Daly used to say I had the best mental health of any athlete he's ever been around because I can laugh and giggle. And then when the game is over, it was over. Mm. And a lot of guys don't do that. They take it home with them. Sure. I ain't do that. No. Was Yeah, that series or that special was a little rough on Scottie Pippen, right? Yeah. How is Scottie Pippen? Well, that's another guy, right, who I thought I was cool with. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and then I said something on ESPN, and I was like, yeah, you know, I used to give him – my tickets when they came to Detroit, and then, and then he and Horace would give me two extra tickets when I got to Horace Chicago, Graham, and, all, right. and he act like, yeah, whatever. That didn't, I don't know. I don't know what <laughs> Sally's talking about. And I was like, sold you out. And I was like, huh? <laughs> Big time, Jeff. Yeah, but you know what? I, I'm okay. I, I have enough friends. They fit. In, yeah, I got the number of friends I got is all the friends I need. So <laughs> I'm fine. Are you sure it wasn't Steve Curry mixed up? Steve Curry was great, man. I'm so happy for Steve. Um, Steve was a great dude. And great how guy. about Jordan? I love Michael, man, and I'm I'm the same intensity. So uh, that's what he loved about Detroit. We were in every single one of us was intense, and on his team they weren't. So mm. for two years we sent them home. One time, Adam, I was uh, you know at the end of the game we're playing a series, and uh, you know I hang out with him. He's gonna go to dinner with me in Detroit. I'm going so I'm out there waiting. He's walking with his group. I said, so what's up, man? I can't hang with you, man. I said, why not? Man, you one of them. I said, I've always been one of them, but the game's over. Like, I'm hungry. Where are we going? <laughs> Got in his Ferrari, boom, took off. And I was like, damn, he's pissed. Too bad. So he took it really personally. Yeah, and I said, yo, if it's either you or me, it's going to be me. <laughs> it's going to be me. <laughs> Would you guard him? I made a mistake and guarded Michael. <laughs> Chuck Daly said, you know, we're going to put you, we're going to put bigs on him. Mm -hmm. He got 20 on me, 22 on Dennis, and 20 on Joe Dumas. (laughs) And and he, there's no stopping that cat. Was uh, Joe the microwave? No, Joe was uh, uh, Vinny Vinny Johnson. 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 That's a nickname. Yes. He thinks up. That's That's right. (laughs) Quickly. That's Mm -hmm. right. Quickly. 007, two, seven (laughs) seconds is up. Dude, yeah. is so underrated. He's all the famer. I mean, yeah, he's great. Yeah, he's up in Sacramento. Mm. Yeah, I don't know what that. So you're good about. with MJ. I'm good. Yeah, but not with Pippen. Well, I don't know. Like don't I know. see him. He's selling weed. He's mm-hmm. selling alcohol. He has um, dreadlocks. Uh, he has dreadlocks. What? Yeah, it's like you know. I, I somebody said, hey, you know, hey, John Sizen, when he was doing his thing, he was like, yeah, what's up? And I was like, damn, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't. Has I didn't he always know. been like that? Just kind of. Stand off, not to me. Yeah, Doug, I get along with everybody because I don't take it as serious as they do. I know it was a job. I Mm -hmm. just really good at doing my job for that amount of time, (laughs) and then I was, you know, where the hoes at? So I was, (laughs) I was an entirely different mentality. I know you, you don't watch a lot of TV, but if you watched Winning Time, yes. Now let me tell you, uh, there's a lot of sensationalism going on. But so much is uh, to make Jerry West that evil. I don't know if he he's intense. Do you consider him evil? Well, in that, on that show, yeah. right? They're making him look like he's this fast going. He's got you know, he's intense mm-hmm. and he's serious. But uh, and then to make the coach look like he's never coached before. Uh, <laughs> This guy coached LaSalle. Yeah. This guy coached Kobe's father in college. Shakespeare? Like, yeah, like Shakespeare. Like he did that like he was afraid. We're talking about West Ham? Yeah. Totally a great coach. They were acting like, oh, my God, I can't coach this team. It's going to be he like was, bumbling. He couldn't wait to get in that position. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, he's next up. Probably so. cut the brake line on the Ted <laughs> speed. <laughs> <laughs> the real story. I was commenting because, you know, what I know about basketball could fill a thimble, but I'm loving the show. Yeah. And I don't know that much about him in real life, but it seems like uh, Kareem on the show, like very standoffish, not interested in playing, like knows what he can do and then wants to fucking bail do you think that was accurate a hundred percent wow i think i think cap he was he's he's a he's an intellectual he's written what nine books now ten books something like Mm -hmm. that he uh 
had a huge jazz collection. So he's definitely when he's listening to jazz and they show him smoking weed mm-hmm. with Spencer Haywood, which I think is a, a great scene. Uh, but Kareem was intense. Mm-hmm. The deal with Kareem is he knew my brother Ron. And so by my third year going into 1989, when we we're about to beat him, he's we're somewhere at the end of the game and he goes, Oh cap, you know, my, you know, my brother, John, right? He goes, I don't talk to rookies. <laughs> and so, so, so they got it right. I'm sitting there cause I'm a huge Kareem fan and I'm, I'm, and my brother's like, <laughs> hold me back. Just calm down. You know what? He's just, he, this is the way he jokes. I got in the game. And there's a the, one of the only posters I have is Duncan on Kareem. Really? I'm dunking on Kareem so hard, Find my eyes poster. are closed. <laughs> really? I was oh so God. when I caught is the ball one? and I look and it was him. I I I could do nothing else but run straight at him, and I was like, I'm I'm trying to put him and the ball in the rim. This is rookie year. And no, this is my this is my second or third year in the league. Yeah, we lost my second year in the lead to them. In 1988, in Game Seven, we got cheated in Game Six, and um, Isaiah broke his ankle and still scored 41. And then, you know, we got cheated. But besides that, I in 1989, I was in my third year in the lead, and I was I realized if you just go to the rim as hard as you can, they're going to move. Mm-hmm. That's why LeBron was so good. He was going what 20 miles per hour, and he's six six ten, 265 pounds. Right. Yeah, you got to move. So. Yeah, it, it struck me. I know Kareem a little bit. I've been around him. I've interviewed him a few times. He's he's uh, he's in his head. He right. loves jazz. He loves literature. He yep. loves you know he he. Which is cool. It's it's uh, yeah, interesting. No, it's it's interesting, but it's funny that he makes his living doing something that's the opposite right. in a way of all the stuff he really mm-hmm. loves. Flashy, you know, physical. so I think in a way he. Did it, got paid, did his job, but didn't like all the other accoutrements mm. that mm-hmm. came along yeah. with it. Mm-hmm. And then that then that sort of it's like when a chick is uh tired of stripping, but she still has to go out there and shake her ass. You have to tell me. <laughs> She's <laughs> she doesn't want to go hang out in the champagne room sure. with fans. You know what I mean? This is beneath her. Right. So that's what Kareem is yeah. was like. In 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 the special or in the series. They, from what I know, and I like I said, I've interviewed him a few times. I've hung out with him a little bit. I, I get the vibe. Yeah. He seems to be pretty on. Yeah. Jerry West seems the guy who's should be upset over this because yeah. he's an alcoholic lunatic who just fucking hates everybody, yeah. suspicious of everything. Uh, yeah. yeah, and I didn't even say I've, I've been around. I've been around uh, Mr. West for a while. I didn't see any of that. And you just see him. I had this great story. We lost a game when I was playing with the Lakers that we shouldn't have lost. And so Phil comes back, and we got a day and a half off before we go back and play. And Phil has everybody come down, have a conversation, get taped, come in the room, breathe, and then said, all right, go home and hug your kids and realize what you're playing for. And they were like, what? And so, you know, Kobe didn't want to hear that. So we go out and we play in one-on-one because Kobe's not leaving the gym. Everybody After else is, the game. No, this is the next day of practice. Oh, the next day. Everyone scatters. Jerry West comes out and he goes, Sal, where is everybody? And I go, Phil sent him home. He said, we're not practicing. I said, he sent him home. And he tore out of there. He was on <laughs> fire because he couldn't do But you have to understand Phil. Phil realizes it's a game and if you – too much pressure breaks pipes. Mm-hmm. And when you take the pressure off and you, and it was a great thing because everyone got to go home because you didn't know where to go. It's 10 o'clock in the morning and you used to be in practice to 1.30 and you know, you can't get your side chicks, you know, awake at that to know. I'm joking. So everybody it's not went home. <laughs> everyone went home and I guess you get to realize what you're playing so hard for and I, we we killed everybody from that point on. After when we went into the finals, Indiana didn't have a chance. But Kobe stayed. Kobe the, stayed, yeah, because he had to drive to Orange County. But I played him one on one every day. He lost. Really? Um, yeah, because I get the ball first because mm-hmm. I'm older, uh-huh. and the game's to five, and I'm not gonna shoot a jump shot. <laughs> I'm gonna back him down and lean on him. him he kept saying, "Man, Abe, you know we got to." I said, "No, dog, I, I'm not losing to you." 
And somebody thought I was lying, and then he came on the best damn sports show and said, yes, Sal beat me every day because he cheated. He got the ball first, and then he did nothing but back me down, dribbled the ball a thousand times until he can get a layup. I said, yeah, I'm not losing. And then you got it out. I, it's buckets or baskets, but I never could figure out. Shirts and skins I could figure oh. out. But, but that was easy, especially with Gina. But buckets and baskets, I was like, don't they kind of mean the same thing? One meant you got the ball again if mm-hmm. you made it, and the other one meant the other guy got the ball. Yeah. Yeah. Now I, but I still don't know which one was buckets and which one was baskets. When you score, then the next guy gets it. Then you get it back if you get the rebound. Oh, you can okay. get it to him, go back. So, so Kobe got the ball. He got the ball. It's, just it's not, not going to score on me. <laughs> no. Yeah, sure, no, not not coming down well, And I just stayed there like this. I said, dude, you're not going to lay the ball up. So you better hit this jump shot. Wow. Now that's impressive. See, if it was buckets where you scored and then you got it out again and you just kept backing him in over and over again, mm-hmm. maybe that's not quite not the accomplishment. Fair. But if he gets to take it out, yeah. what was the age difference? I, he was uh, 21. I think he had just turned uh, – he was 19 or 20. I think he won his championship when he was 20. And so that was 2000. And uh, – uh, 20 or 21. I don't, I don't remember what it is. And I remember talking to him and I said, so, you going to be the next Michael Jordan? He's like, nah, I'm going to be the first Kobe Bryant. Wow. And I was like, hmm, hmm, okay. And he was not joking. Did, did he, now could you, let's just say 28-year-old Kobe, would yeah. you have still beat him the same if you were the same age you were at the time? Did yeah. he improve that much? Yeah, he did. So I got punched in the stomach. By Charles Oakley at the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> this is I swear Dave Chappelle kept saying, I wish I had my show. Because it was Dave and and Chris Tucker. And they ran up and I was walking by Mike in the booth. He said, Well, right, right here. Here's your man. Here's your man right here. Right here. Say it in front of him. And Kobe or Mike. And I used to tell oh, Mike so that I was you, going to say all kind of stuff. Who's better? And I you said know, you should know. I said, Mike, at twenty seven, the kid would give you the business. And Charles Oakley comes from over there and I don't see the punch until the last second. And he hits me, <laughs> knocks all the air out of me, and they're laughing and I'm like, ah <laughs> <laughs> You know, but I would say things. I would get on TV and say, oh, he's not the greatest player of all time. Probably the greatest in the 90s. It's just because I got tired of ESPN, you know, making a messiah. And and I would tell him, I said, I'm going to say complete opposite and watch and watch how they go crazy. Because, you know, if you go up to Michael and say, you're the greatest player of all time, he goes, I don't know the great. He wouldn't say, I'm the greatest player of all time. He wouldn't say that. He was like, well, you know, it depends on the era. He would give you all the all the other ideas. But. You know, how do you think LeBron fits into that conversation? LeBron is has been the best since 2010. Yeah. Right. And um, but just if it, if all things pound for pound, you know, if it was. Well, he's 6'11", mm. 6'10". He played where you don't you can't hand check. He played where you can't hit somebody to send a message. We used to get when you had a fight in the NBA. It used to be the refs break you up, and you do. You, you ever see an NBA player fight? You better watch. Mm-hmm. This this how NBA players fight. <laughs> yeah. With a referee on their chest because they don't want to hit anybody, and they go cool them down, get them a sub, and then you come back in, and then fines were a hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Now, fines are your salary. Yeah, oh you're gonna be gone for a few like, games. A few games, season. It's entirely uh, you know, they had to realize that our largest market was China. And insubordination doesn't look good. Wow. Oh. And talking back and yelling. That's why if you talk or say something to a ref, they can tech you and throw you out the game. You don't want to give off that image. And they don't want their people seeing that you can be oh. this wow. freewheeling. So ah. there's 300 million people when, when we play a game in China that watches. And there's only 379 million people in America. So more people watch an NBA game. In China, then in there. Ah, there's like 327 here in America. 327. Like well, yeah. um, it's making your point. <laughs> According to the census. Yeah. The same uh, the same amount, our entire population. Right. They're, yeah. watching. Are, They're watching. They're watching. Interesting, they sort of push back against the man. That's fascinating. Because they have a culture that basically relies on no pushing back right. against the man. Exactly. And you remember when LeBron said what he said, and he was saying, then all of a sudden you didn't hear it anymore? Like, right. Shut up about Hong Kong. Mm, right. It's none yeah. of your business. Yeah. He said <laughs> the, it's our business. <laughs> The owner, the co-owner of Rockets. Houston Rockets, yeah. needed to edu- needed to educate himself. <laughs> yeah, it's like shut up, bro. <laughs> yeah, very very interesting. Well, and and on that note, I wasn't even going to get into this, but there was this whole story that uh, 
Disney and and Disney's just up the street from where we are. Yeah. And remember a few weeks ago they had to kind of walk out over the whole don't say yeah. gay thing and Orlando and Epcot Center and blah 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 blah. So Disney sort of their employees and everyone went spastic over the uh, Florida Ron DeSantis what they call the don't say gay bill. Um now Disney just cut out a gay kiss or a gay Chris can look it up but they just edited their movie for another market for China yeah. which is they just edited the gay out of it so Disney what which, lane are we which in Disney is it well we're in the money lane yes we're yeah. in the diamonds ah, lane nicely <laughs> done I pluralized it for my brother <laughs> <laughs> I have, I have a black movie. guys call it the diamond slang? It is, but but you know, it was funny. In America, they used to edit out Lena Horne oh, when, really? when they played in the South. Oh, man. Because they didn't want to see this black woman in, you know, having a real role, so they had to edit her out of movies. One of the most gorgeous, talented yeah, women. I learned who Lena Horne was from uh, Fred Sanford and Sanford and Son. Like, I guess <laughs> he loved Lena Horne in, you know, 1975. Yeah. That's who... That guy ran the junkyard in South Central sure. had a boner for Lena Horne. Yeah, but yeah, it's 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 historically we've done it. Confusing. But what I'm saying is, is you are basically trying to boycott Florida, but you're carving the gay. I think it was whatever the latest offering was. J.K. Rowling said, like, one of the characters was gay, and then the next thing you know, these, the one dude says to the other dude, I love you, and they just cut it out because it's not going to work over there in the Chinese market. What was that story, Chris? It's out there somewhere. Uh, the only one I'm seeing is the the movie Lightyear uh, by Pixar had a gay kiss Oh, I heard about it. this. But so they it, cut that out. They cut sure it out, but then they restored it after the Don't Say Gay bill. No, no, not Lightyear. Dawson will, Dawson will find okay. it. It's, it's, I got a movie coming out on Disney+. Oh, Plus. God damn it. Oh, my God. I, I'm so excited about this. I forgot about, about this. That's right. Don't don't mess with Disney right now, bro. <laughs> Sneakerella. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I played a king, so it's it's pretty slick. You, it's, my my shit. son loves <laughs> oh, basketball, and I love musicals, and we are so excited. <laughs> Let me tell you what I said. You know, I, I always wanted to be an actor. I always... Uh, wanted to be in entertainment, and I used to say I'm gonna try to be. I'm gonna be famous in basketball, and then it's gonna be easy in Hollywood. I was a hundred percent wrong. I forgot I was black and seven foot. <laughs> 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 but but I have I have made it work, and I've always wanted to be in a musical. Like my, I love the new West Side Story. I love West Side Story. I love I love musicals, and you know you can't you know now when you say that. They think different things, mm. but I I used to love it, and I uh, I loved the Wiz, I loved um, uh, what is it uh, Common, you know those were with mm -hmm. uh, Harry Belafonte and Dorothy Dantridge, and so I just literally loved, and I always wanted to be in one, and now I love hip hop, so I get the rhyme, I get the rap, I get to I get to kind of be myself because the way I handle. My daughters is how I handled my daughters on this show. Very loving, very giving, uh, but stern. And I got a, I had a really good part. I loved it. So. It's called Sneakerella, by the yeah. way. Yeah, it's yeah. available May 13th on Disney+. Plus. Plus. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I think we'll wait on that uh, Disney story, but it is. Not, it's, not, it's not Disney. <laughs> it's not Disney. because It's yeah, Warner Brothers. Oh, oh, it's Warner, Warner Brothers, those Warner Brothers. bastards. Sorry, yeah. screw Warner Brothers. <laughs> Jump in, John. <laughs> yes, yes. They yeah. got rid of Ellen. I don't like them. <laughs> yes. It's Warner Brothers. Yeah, it's the, the Harry Potter universe movie, uh, Fantastic Beasts. Mm, so, that's right. Yeah, so according to the outlet, uh, Warner Brothers accepted China's request to remove six seconds from the movie. Accepted their request. Six <laughs> inches from yeah, the movie. The omitted content, quote, alluded to the romantic past between uh, the film's main characters, Dumbledore and Grendelwald. I love that none wow. of us know any yeah, of this. Yeah, I think somebody yeah. said I love you or something. Yeah, the, the, the dialogue lines were, because I was in love with you, and the summer Gellert and I fell in love were cut. Mm. Okay. Controversy. They got uh, it's so exhausting. Listen, you know the thing about China, in a sense, it's like your kid saying, you know, look, I get to eat M and M's three meals a day, or I'm going to wish you into the cornfield, and you go, <laughs> oh, okay, your highness, here's your M and M's. 
Is it good for them, though? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we're not going to say anything gay. Don't you guys want to get on with it? Yeah. Like, you want to join people? It's 2022. Yeah. Why would you want to be this way? You yeah. know, why yeah. not come join us in the modern times right. that we're living in? I know you don't want to hear about yeah. it. You don't want to see it. It doesn't but mean it doesn't exist. We've all seen it and heard about it, and we're doing we're all okay. Still here. We're all still here. <laughs> <laughs> it's always been here, too. Yeah. Yes. It's always yeah. been here. That's right. Yeah. You got any stories from the locker room? <laughs> this is this is a trip. I had a I, I went to play in Greece, um, right after I played with the Lakers. I mean with um with the Bulls, because I had the John Sally late night show was on Buena Vista. They replaced me with Keenan and then put Magic on. Uh, but I had this show. We we were doing all the publicity, and then I had I wasn't coming on until March, so I couldn't play in the NBA season. Plus the Bulls didn't want to give me the money I wanted. So, and I wasn't going to sit around. So I went to play in Greece. And in Greece, my teammate, John Amici, is the first NBA player to uh, admit from, that he was uh, gay and wrote a book about it. From Cocoon. <laughs> oh, yeah. He uh, co starred with Wilford Brimley. Yeah. That's right. And so we, we get to this island. Bad game, huh? Yeah. Like a great post up game. Great post up. And we, we, get, we get to an island uh, called Thalassaniki, the island of beautiful women. I was like, yo, right after curf after they check for curfew, we're going out. And he was like, nah, I'm cool. So I said, man, it's the island of beautiful women. You know, this like the name, nine birds. <laughs> we, we out. And he was like, I'm cool. So I, and I looked at him. I said, oh. He goes, yeah. I said, oh, all right. That's what's up. Well, you know, more holes for me. I'll see you later. <laughs> and I go out and I don't speak Greek. And so I don't talk to anybody, but he come back. Then he writes the book. And he tells the story. And, you know, it's we're on Best Damn Sports Show. And it's awkward for people who obviously don't understand their feelings about their own emotion. I don't have a problem with gay people, you know, you know great fashion. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of them. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, he was cool with me. I don't really care. And they said, does Sal know? He goes, oh, yeah, Sal figured it out. And he was cool with it. But I never had a problem with whatever you do with your private part and your private. That's why was it even a conversation? I asked some of my gay friends, why do y'all keep saying I'm gay? Like, no one asked you. <laughs> right. Like, right. No one is trying to get to it. So why do you mention it? That's certainly another way to look at it. That yeah. we don't think yeah, my, like, I don't walk around saying I'm heterosexual. So I never understood. And I guess because I didn't understand the trauma or what they had to go to to disguise it from their family, friends, church, school. You know, that's what they're, they're holding on to. So I just said, you know, I didn't, I didn't really care. Mm -hmm. It's funny when I go, uh, any gay stories from the uh, NBA? Well, when I was playing in Greece. Greece uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Perfect place to play. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we'll take a break. John is going to hang with us, and we'll do the news right after this. Well, L.A. residents now have a new type of crime that at least some of them, some of us, some of you, have to protect yourselves from. Uh, Captain Jonathan Tippett, who spearheads an LAPD follow home robbery task force, told the city police commission that street gangs are starting to follow people home in order to rob them. He says that at least 17 gangs have independently staged robberies targeting people wearing high end watches or driving expensive cars. Uh, he went on to say that many victims are dealing with uh, traumatic injuries from being tackled, kicked, beaten, punched, pistol whipped. Uh, he says that there were 165 such holdups last year and 56 so far this year, including five in the past two days. It's always sad when the cop's answer to crime is like, don't wear a no. Rolex, don't wear jewelry, don't drive a fancy car. Be like a zookeeper going, we let everyone free, all the animals run, so keep your hands yeah. in your, your pockets, pockets and don't establish eye contact with the bangle <laughs> tops. Like, maybe you should do your job and we could walk through and look at things. Like, just yeah. don't come no in profile. with any food, be look like, down. It'd be like saying there's a lot of rape going on at this campus. Don't wear revealing clothes, don't, wear don't smile on anybody. That was That's the right. answer for many years. Yeah. For many years. I, I didn't, you know, yesterday when I saw the, um, the guy uh, hit the person and they rolled on the top. Mm -hmm. And I said, man, that looks staged. Everyone's oh. wearing gray. Those wires are wearing black. You can't see the face on anything. So at first I thought it was staged. I didn't and, see it. What happened? Well, they were chasing this girl and she went to get in this car and the car wouldn't let her in. And so the, uh, the charger comes behind her and literally hits her. She rolls off of it and then she pulls her watch off and throws it. Oh, really? And they picked it up and they jump in the charger. And they, but now... When they call them gangs, those are called crews. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you rob somebody, you got a crew. It's not 
Bloods, Crips. That's mm. not it. It's a it's a it's a crew knowing uh, exactly how to how to point out things. It's just like when you see bank robbers. You're going to, you're going in with your crew, and they're starting to realize that people were so happy. The way I look at it, they're so happy and not paying attention to where you're going. Um, I'm from Brooklyn. I wear an expensive watch, but I also know where not to wear. You know what I'm saying? I'm not I'm not putting myself. You try not to put yourself in in that in that situation. Yeah, yeah. it's and, nice being from a place where you can go. I'm from because when I go, I'm from Valley Village, and everyone goes, "Shut the fuck <laughs> up! What do you know? I can't talk about pizza He's or like watches." Or anything. I'm from. Well, we were North Hollywood, but we yeah yeah. Shut up! <laughs> no one's I fucking hear what you have to say. Yeah, it's but bad though. Brooklyn's really bad. good though. We, it is. We, have, we have to listen. Mm -hmm. So is it? Do you worry? I mean, you wear I a do. Nice watch. Well, I don't have a concealed weapon license any longer. But when I, when I when I did, I, I played in Detroit <laughs> during the crack pandemic. Pandemic, uh, and I and I said that on purpose. Mm -hmm. And I literally used to carry a piece, even though I played with the Pistons and people. You know, they, they all they're gonna say is good. I know he got it, mm -hmm. and he ain't gonna put himself at risk. Um, so you carried, you were packing. I was always, Detroit. yeah. And then, and then I got here, and they were like, you know what, you got to go through to get a concealed oh, weapon license. You, you, know you have to basically be in law enforcement or have a briefcase right. of money handcuffed to your arm. But I also know they robbed my boy Jazzy Fay, the producer. He was eating at a place in the Beverly Center. I'm not going to say the name of the place, Lux Cafe. <laughs> And these guys, he said, "Oh man, Jazzy Faye, what's up?" He was like, "Yeah, man, how you doing?" He said, "Is oh. that like outside around the outside?" It's of the right on the center? outside of the right. Yeah. And he sits down and he puts the gun in his in his way in his uh, gut and he said, "Yeah, run that run that watch." And is eating his French fries, like reaching over eating his French fries. He takes the watch off, takes the watch. And, what you got money in your pocket? He goes, "Nah, man, I got credit cards." He goes, Let me see him. Oh, you got no money? He said, "Yo, man, I like your music." And got up and walked away. And that's how they're robbing people when you're going to eat. They're like they're sitting down, knowing oh there's God. no cops there, mm -hmm. knowing there's no cops outside, no one's going to tackle you. Mm -hmm. So I mean, they they got it worked out on how to rob people. But those are crews. Those are crews. Crews. Those those robbing. And it's not like a there's a whole bunch of them and they have a meeting on Wednesdays. <laughs> nah, Union. it's like it's like. And you know, I always notice too. Um, we would always be taught this in the NBA. When you meet, you go to another city and you meet a girl and, you know, you're in the club and you're drinking, um, you shouldn't go to their house, mm. right? If you're going to do something, you should go back to the hotel. Everything's on the camera. Mm. Mm -hmm. There's security downstairs. There's extra security because we're in. And I remember this one um, singer talked about, you know, he kicked it with these two girls and then he was going to the bathroom and he left his phone recording. Mm -hmm. And they were like, yo, you call such and such. Yo, we got him right here. You know what I'm saying? Let's just hang out for a while, call him, and then we'll let him in the room. We'll get him up. And, you know, he's sitting there. Security takes them out, and he listens back to what they were saying. He wanted to hear if they were talking about how good he was. He wasn't. They were talking about how to rob him. Mm. And they and that's that's a serious thing, too. You run into the prettiest girl in the world. In Brooklyn, You, I would say, you meet a girl. I said, where you from? I said, the Bronx. I would walk away. <laughs> There was no way I was going up to the Bronx to visit her. I'm from Brooklyn. I'm not going up there because as soon as you get to her building, you robbed at the front. So I'd be like, hey, bitch, I'm from North Hollywood. Yeah. Pow, pow. So, so I, I'm Valley Village adjacent, so I feel you. Real from I know the streets. That's right. <laughs> Ventura. <laughs> yeah, friends in Encino. <laughs> Well, this is a man we haven't talked about in a while, and let's check in with him. Cuba Gooding Jr. Uh, he's pleaded guilty to one count of forcibly touching a woman at a New York City bar back in 2018. Remember that story? Yeah. Remember the, that his lap or something? Yeah, the, the closed circuit footage. Um, he's not receiving jail time, according to the New York Times, and he has to attend six months of counseling. She sat on his lap, though. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Uh, he can instead plead guilty to harassment at a lower level than a misdemeanor. In this guilty plea, Cuba admitted that he kissed the waitress on her lips inside the Lavo New York restaurant and nightclub without consent. He told the court, I apologize for ever making anybody feel inappropriately touched. Well, Jim Carrey did that on stage. He didn't get arrested. It's true. He did? I didn't know that. He got his award. He went up and he kissed 
Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. Between yeah. him and uh, Adrian Brody. Yeah, that's right. Adrian Brody did, did it. it with Holly Berry, mm-hmm. who plays yeah. Pat Riley. That's yeah. right. That's right. Maybe they should have smacked him, and it would have been different. I just, she was like at a club, and she came over and sat on his lap. Yeah, we watched the video. I mean, I know yeah, it was a few like, years ago, but it weird. it was very odd. She mm-hmm. threw first. Would yeah, I had. <laughs> I, mean, I had go over and sit on the dude's lap. <laughs> a, yeah. You're gonna get groped. Yeah, I had. I had a case groping. like that. I had a case. I was in the hotel in uh, in Detroit, and the girl bought the food, and they had a uh, Jack the Jack the Mayor used to be the the coach of the Red Wings, and the hotel had the Sally Long Dog, and so <laughs> when she brings it, right, I'm in there with a friend of mine, and she goes, everybody in the kitchen wants to know, does it look like this? And I go, no, nah, it's not red with burn marks, <laughs> laughing and gigging. And so when she's putting it down, she, I, I literally put her tip right in the pocket. There's a pocket right here. Was she the waitress? Waitress. Uh-huh. I put the tip. She was like, oh, you don't have to. It's paid for. I said, no, nah, it's cool. It's for you. And she was like, you guys look like you're going to have a good time. And the girl goes, you can join us. And I go, oh, this is going to be gone. She goes, no, 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 no. She leaves. She sues me <laughs> and says that I fondled her breast and I made an inappropriate offer. I co I countersued her, mm. and they was what? like, "Sal, don't do this. Just pay and get." I said, "No, no, 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 no. This this is for everybody else. Mm-hmm. It's not just for me. You can't sit around and flirt and be whatever with me. And I tip you, and you think hmm, I can get twelve thousand dollars out of this. I can get twenty thousand dollars out of it. You got You got to go back at people. Expect because if she would have came and sat on his lap and he pushed her, he also would have had assault. assault. Yeah. Right, right. But she was in the wrong place. So what happened to your suit? I won. That's we have we ever heard about this ever? No, because I won. You right. never hear when somebody of name wins. Okay, I also won the lawsuit. I, I was in a case with my oldest daughter and her mother, and I won that. So I got custody of a female, and no one said anything about that. I got accused for this girl said I was her daughter's uh, mother. I mean father, and I didn't. I literally had the girl removed from my property one time, and they were like, "Yeah, I got pregnant with John. We did the blood test." Not mine. Obviously, I didn't do anything that big in the paper. It was the front front yeah. page oh, before the, accu- uh, the accusation. But as soon as all of a sudden I'm vindicated, is that's the right word? Yeah. Right? Um, no one wants to hear about it. I think that has to be a rule with newspapers. If you're going to put it on the headline, the accusation, the the result has to also be a headline. Yeah, but shock works. Yeah. Yeah. Saying I'm sorry doesn't. There was a hot dog named after your dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought Glad you were let that go. Along. But you know, I was long tall Sally. So and they was like, oh, hey, we're gonna call it we're gonna call it the long dog Sally. And ah. I was like, Oh, it's a great idea. It mm. was funny what she said. I laughed. Yeah. But I'm not giving you twenty thousand dollars, <laughs> you know, because you felt that this girl offered you. And I didn't offer. I never offer girls to be with other girls. I always send the girls to do that. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, kind of. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we've we've talked about that with football, I believe. But is there? And you guys, please correct me if I'm wrong. Is there like the sort of new recruits rookie? Like, here's here's how this shit works. Like the classes that basically football yeah. players you, have to take. You predated that, didn't yeah, you? No, yeah, we had we had. Uh, I was one of the counselors at the NBA pre. Uh, it's it's the pre draft. So we take the top fifty players and they bring them to Dallas. Craziest thing is, it's a setup from the beginning, right? So they have the guys in the lobby. And say, hey, meet in the lobby. We're going to go. To the, and you, you just have all these players finally seeing each other and acting like they don't know who each other are. And then they have three of the hottest girls in, in flight attendant outfits walk in and go, oh, you're such and such. You're such and such. And the guys are sitting around. And he was like, well, you know, I'm, I'm roommating with her. Give me a key and I'll just meet you. Where are you going? I'll go in this meeting. Give me a key and I'll, I'll meet you in your room. And dudes are like, I'm in room 725. Mm. And then when they get back to the room, everything they own is gone. Nice. Mm. Big car. The player never says anything. (laughs) Ah. So on Sunday, when we having the go away, all of a sudden you see the guys wearing the same clothes every day, but he's not saying anything. Right. So by the third day, they open it and all of that stuff is on stage. And then the girls come out as actress and they're embarrassed, but Mm. it's better to be embarrassed in front of us the, the mistake and explain the mistake. I then went back to the NBA. I said, there's a little bit more you got to go to. An NBA player went to a strip joint, plays for the Knicks. He goes to a strip joint in Queens. First mistake. and <laughs> First mistake. <laughs> Great place. First mistake. And he doesn't have a car or, or, or protection. He gets an Uber. And they literally box him in, open the van, put the gun on him, 
take his watch, take his chain, all of his money. And then for good measure, they shot him in the leg. <gasps> wow. Jeremy yeah. Lin. Yeah. Plat- <laughs> <laughs> they shot him in the leg. And I don't know what happened to that player, but there's been players of Washington, D.C. that they literally caught him in his house, tied him up, beat him up, left him there. You know, you just got to watch it. You got this dough. If I, I, I tell guys, my friend Megan always talking about, why do people have to be behind the gate? They're so they have to be behind the gate. You have to because when you got something, Kanye said in the song, if I can't get work, I'll take work. <laughs> so meaning I, if I can't get what you have, I'll take what you have. Well, an and athlete, everybody knows your schedule. Everybody knows when you're at home. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that would happen out here with, I think, Dodgers, uh, right? one of the Dodgers players. Yazi? Uh, yeah. Yazi El Puig? Yeah. yeah, Puig, yeah. I think they robbed his place. Yeah. They yeah. robbed me in Miami. They did? I went, to, I went to practice, shoot around. My wife went out to get lunch, and they, I was on Star Island, so we knew it had to be security because you have to come through there. And they go, well, they, they came in through because it's on the water. They came in through the water. And I was like, how do you know that? <laughs> How do you know they came yeah. in on the water? And they went, because I had my watches out the day before. And I said, let me put these in in a, in a, in their thing. And they tore the house up, and they just took the watches. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's sure. some cool stuff. What's the best watch they got? They got a, they got a Tiffany. So Tiffany had made watches only one year, and I had that watch, and I knew it was going to have value. And then I had a Rolex because I'm an idiot. And, uh, <laughs> and you know, you got to have a Rolex. You know, that's what they tell you. So I had a Rolex. Um, but I had some other things that looked like they were good, but they weren't. Since then, you know, I got, I've, I've always collected watches. So I had Cartier and um, this, this. I don't want to make you sick, but what would the Tiffany be worth today? <sighs> 45000 Damn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was twelve thousand then. I stole my own watch because <laughs> I did. I did. Go on. I, I I I was sitting on an airplane once, in, you know, two thousand and two or something. I was just looking through a magazine, and there's a full page ad for a watch that was really nice. Right. And I just said, "Why can't I have a nice watch?" You know. I'm from North Hollywood. You know how right. I know how you are. And, and my parents are so cheap, and everyone's so cheap, and everyone's car was like you know 11 years older than the year we were in. You know, nobody <laughs> bought a new car. My mom would get like you know, everything. If we bought a toaster, be used. You know, from a from a yard sale. Like everything was so fucked up and downtrodden. And I kind of yeah, you know, I got into that was my psyche. And I was sitting on this plane in first class, like going to New York to do Letterman or something. And I was like. You can buy a nice watch for yourself. And uh, it was like, I don't know, 6500 bucks or seven grand. I was like, I deserve a nice watch. And then I, I bought it and I never wore it. But when I was doing a celebrity apprentice, you bring all the suits and all the boardroom stuff. And I was like, I'm going to show up to that boardroom and wearing a suit. And I'm gonna have a belt, all the exotic <laughs> like stuff my parents boy. could only dream of, and and I'm gonna put a nice watch on, and I'm gonna sit there looking looking like I'm all business. And I, I said, so after getting booted off the show after like ten minutes, I packed all my shit up. We stayed in Trump Tower, and we came back to L. A. And then like a year later, I was going out to some event or something. I was like, where's that watch? Never could find the watch. Never saw the watch. I search in every drawer, everything. And I was like, I took it to Celebrity Apprentice. Where the fuck is that watch? I'm such a dope that I always leave myself 20 minutes less time to pack than I need. And I end up throwing everything, mm-hmm. just shoving. Mm-hmm. I took the watch and I was like, I don't want it to get fucked up. I'm not going to carry it through the airport. And I put it inside a brown dress shoe and I, it just slid all the way to the toe. And I just threw it in the bag. And some point when I got back to L.A., the brown dress shoes that I've never worn since went like back into the closet. And there the watch lived for like the next six years until I finally wow. Wow. Pull, pulled it out again. I thought you got insurance money. Now I'm going to get rolled after the show. So North Hollywood. <laughs> All right. Let's do one more, Gina Gray. OK, well, let's do some basketball. I don't know if this uh, is an, a new trend. Hopefully not. The Minnesota Timberwolves and the L.A. Clippers game Tuesday night was delayed for a 
very strange protest. Uh, we have a picture. A fan attempted to glue herself oh, to I the saw court. This. Yeah, 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 under one of the baskets while the Timberwolves were shooting free throws at the other end of the court. The woman was removed a couple of minutes after resisting. She was protesting the co-owner of the Timberwolves, Glenn Taylor, because he owns a chicken farm, which <sighs> recently had to kill chickens because of a bird flu outbreak. So oh, she glued, see this coming. <laughs> glued herself to the court. Yes, as opposed to the chicken farm petting zoos That's right. where no chicken ever no. perishes. Yeah, <laughs> they she, live long, happy lives. Isn't the glue made from horses? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. It's gorilla glue. Oh, yeah. That's right. That made shit from does not gorillas? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm a, I'm a vegan, and I'm a proud member of PETA, and I, I think that was just on her. Yeah, that, uh-huh. was, that was not sanctioned. Yeah, that's just, that just on her. And it was crazy that she picked... You know, to glue her hand. Because, <laughs> you know, they just snatched her up. Yeah. And then they had the guy come out trying wow. to get the glue up. Oh, they did. Yeah. And I don't know. I know quite a bit about adhesives. But <laughs> I, I really do. I have a construction background. So I could. She needed to go with a quick, you know, crazy oh, quick glue dry, yeah. style. Not the contact cement or sure. construction. She got adhesive. what she wanted. But she got the, she got the attention yeah. and we're talking about it. No offense, uh, John Sally, but we're in love with meat and animal protein well, too much. Well, you don't much. know any better. And we don't know any better, but it's so hard to talk people out of it. Yeah. All right, let's bring it home, Gina Grad. <laughs> <laughs> Enough said. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Obviously, vagina still hurts. Gina, Gina! <laughs> that was the news with Gina Grad. Last but not least, there's Geico. Would you love to save some money on your insurance? Of course you would. Who doesn't love a deal? And when it comes to great rates on insurance, everything, well, there's Geico. Geico can help you insure your truck, your car, your motorcycle, your boat, RV, even homeowners, condos, and renters coverage as well. Save time and get yourself a nice discount when you get your bundle on. Plus, add the easy-to-use Geico mobile app and 24-7 roadside assistance when you switch, and it becomes a no-brainer. So switch today (laughs) at Geico. That is geico.com. Uh, Indianapolis, Ill, uh, I would say Illinois all the time. In- Indiana, you can go to uh, it's a name. Helium. Yeah, you're right. Helium yeah. Comedy Club, May 6th and 7th. We're doing live shows. Huntington Beach, I think, is going to sell out for us at Sea Legs. Fun venue out there, May 20th. Let's go to mcrolla.com for all that. Sneakerella is the name of the movie on mm-hmm. Disney Plus, May 13th. Watch John act his ass off. Website, johnsally.com. johnsallycryptoshow.com. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, also. Also, johnsallycryptoshow.com. Yeah. Nice. And Adam Ray's got shows coming up all over the place. adamraycomedy.com. Until next time, it's Adam Carolla. For John Sally, Adam Ray, Gina Grant, Paul Bryan, say it. Mahala run into the prettiest girl in the world in Brooklyn you I would say you meet a girl I said where you from said the Bronx I would walk away (laughs) there was no way I was going up to the Bronx to visit her (laughs) I'm from Brooklyn I'm not going up there because as soon as you get to her building you robbed at the front so I'd be like hey bitch I'm from (laughs) North Hollywood yeah